Okay, I'm back. Um, I've got a feeling this video is going to be a bit longer than I thought. Um, I'm actually only about two thirds of the way through, and it's now. I think maybe um, my pace might pick up. Actually, it could be because I spent a lot of time going with uh, Charles and Steve talking about David Icke. I think I spent about 10 to 20 minutes on that one thread. I'll probably pick up a little bit, but anyway, um, <coughs> we carry on here. Pauline Phillips says on Sarah Everard. Unfortunately, you are. I think you're right, Ben. Of if this bloke commits suicide, I reckon that will prove it. Two things interesting: that there are tunnels around his family's now unused garage, and the police were searching them. Why? Looking for other victims. The other thing: the Freemasons are embedded in the police force, or should I say, the other way around? To me, conflict of interests. You owe your loyalty to your brother, not to the public or your oath. Perfect recipe for corruption, if you ask me. Me too, pa pa Pauline. Absolutely, yes. Um, a lot of the stories actually that came out of the, the initial stories, it's rather like 9-11 and 7-7. A lot of the initial stories, it's always worth looking at the first news stories. Like when, da when Bin Laden was supposedly killed by C SEAL Team 6, all those stories about, oh, the, 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 the body will be taken back to, to the United States and things like that, all that... Those are the important news stories because very often they come out before the cover story has been the cover story narrative has been put into place. <clears throat> and we see, as you said, in the initial stories, they were talking about the other woman who'd been arrested, or the one there's a woman who'd been arrested along with um, cousins, the the main suspect. Someone else had been ar arrested as an accessory, a woman. And then, of course, they were searching the house and talked about underground tunnels and things like that. I saw that. Um, why? I mean, have they got? Is there like a storeroom underneath, like with Michel Dutru in Belgium, where he kept like teenage girls down there um, for procurement? Michel Dutru, when he was arrested, they found like in his cellar, he had like, there was like about five girls down there who'd been kidnapped. And he used to take them, they, he, basically they used to handcuff them and take them to Chateau, uh, the, the famous place where the elite lived and things like that. Maybe that's Maybe that's what they found. I don't know. We'll find out. Nihilist Lives Matter says, why am I thinking about Hovis bread? Oh, I think it's something to do with uh, my uh, attire. I don't, I'm not sure um, if I get you. But, um, MJ, hello, man, on Sarah Everard. MJ said, what next? A fake terror attack to make the police look like heroes again? Good video, Ben. The whole story is clearly fake as fuck. Yeah, um, it wouldn't surprise me, you know, if something like that happens. I mean, we've had lots of kind of... They've had a lot of scandals lately. I mean, they've had this guy arrested. He was a member of, like, National Action, which has been listed as a terrorist organization. I think it's probably like a... It's probably like a... Um, probably an MI5 front. But, um... It's... Who knows? I mean, it's... It would do the trick, wouldn't it? It would actually make... It would restore confidence in the police, wouldn't it? BZ Garson says, how is it fake as fuck? Where's your evidence? Fancy speculation is not evidence. Well, if, if you look in the video, BZ, I do explain why I think this is the case. Now, I know this. What I say is, I, I admit that what I say in the video is speculation, but I think it is legitimately done. I think I've done it legitimately for a legitimate reason. Definitely. And I explain why. So, yeah, I don't have proof of what I'm saying, and I admit that in the video, but I think there's something going on here. Right, um, Lemsip said here on what happened. I actually left a test text message for Lemsip. Mark Drakeford, that's him, the first minister of Wales, is in the Labour Party. Oh, right. I couldn't think of his name and I thought he was in Plaid Cymru. He later retracted his statement on a curfew about a curfew on men. The Green Party House of Lords member was also being ironic. Yeah, um, what's I forgot her name now, but um, she also said that basically it was a hyperbole. <clears throat> it was a hyperbole she just brought up, and then other people just picked it, like Drakeford picked it up and ran with it. And, but the very fact it was even cons talked about seriously is disturbing. The very fact that it was even, it was even not dismissed immediately was very disturbing and says and, and very, very telling. Uh, but Lemsip carries on. Oh, Niall Murphy, yeah, Niall Murphy made a video about this. Niall Murphy joked that if it came about, he might identify as a woman and use female pronouns after 6pm every day so he could go out after that time as he was making fun of the feminist women who think there are several genders and men simply by identifying as women, they are seen as women without even having to dress like a woman, take cross hormones or have a sex change operation. 
In fact, there are more traditional feminists who are against the Gender Recognition Act, and they all formed a group called A Woman's Place. Yeah, that's um, the TERFs, the trans exclusionary radical feminists. You get people like um, Posey Parker and Graham Linehan. Um, and Kevin Logan and Christy Winters are always having a go at them. But yeah, there's a division now within the feminist movement. The left, at least the left, are like this. And it's a sign perhaps that they are, there was this distillation of they're becoming smaller in number, but they become the ones that are left are, are more intense. As a result, some of their some of their coalitions of convenience are breaking down. We have this get this we have the intersectional feminists and the turfs now who are attacking each other. Um Christy, like you have Christy Winters, Kevin Logan, who are distinctly intersectional, and you have Posey Parker, Jermaine Greer. A lot of the old a lot of the um old traditional second wave feminists are, are joined the turfs. Jermaine Greer, Julie Bindle, etc. They're very pro turf. Mm. But um, either way, I mean, it's 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 a horrible situation. I mean, it just shows how how much the propaganda has had an effect that some stupid idiot cow Green Party slag in the House of Lords, this overpaid, underworked old biddy, makes a hyperbole. It just makes an ironic joke, almost a joke about well, maybe we should make white. I mean, we she said men, but of course she means white men. White men stay indoors after 6 p.m. And rather than just dismissing her, even when she herself admitted that she didn't mean it, you get, you know, you, you get the mainstream politicians, even the First Minister of Wales, sort of nodding along, going, mm, yeah, maybe not a bad idea. You know, it's like... And then he said, oh, oh she didn't mean it. Oh, right, OK. Oh, oh, I don't mean it either. You know, in a sensible world, someone like her would be just... It would just be laughed out of the entire building. And no one would ever speak of it again. Especially after she admitted it. It's going to show, doesn't it? Um, Sarah Erard, Iman Piadima, poor Dima, said. Well, as far as your... Here we go. Hmm. Well, so far, your opinions are much less offensive than mine. No doubt you make some legitimate observations, but I don't agree at all that it's a real event that's been co-opted for the agenda. This is all reminiscent of Han Handy Sook and many similar events. <laughs> uh, um, Eamon Padima has turned into a spoonerism so as to confuse the bots, of course. Yeah. Whenever you see an instant agenda in the wake of a story like this, you can be pretty sure it's fake because it shows foresight and an orchestrated event. And it's much easier to control the narrative with a fake event than a make-it-happen one. No one is likely to go off script, for example. The only real question is whether she ever existed at all, but that's secondary. I know some people would say that's the question of whether it happened is of secondary importance, but I completely disagree. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, the make it happen thing, like 9-11, 7-7, etc., are real events, whereas you have, like, essentially non-events, like uh, the Manchester bombing. I think Richard D. Hall has proved his case on that, and several others, which appear to not only be orchestrated false flag but they're just non-existent they're actually literally stagecraft <clears throat> in case of the manchester arena it was just someone set off a firecracker essentially and um we, we have this narrative of a major terrorist attack but uh the question is i mean maybe you're going to come to this, this is quite a long comment so i'll just ask in advance you may answer me in a minute why would they do that with this why would sarah everard i mean this is the thing, I mean, it's, is Sarah Everard the new Lee Rigby? I mean, why would they do this? What's the point? Eamon continues. There's a parallel with the similar argument that some people have made, that it's unnecessary to posit that SARS-CoV-2 doesn't exist because the response is clearly disproportionate and agenda-driven anyway. Yes, that's what I think. That's my position. In both cases, I'd say that the reluctance not to go too far, while understandable, is a big problem because it stymies the most efficient way of shooting down the narrative. We should point out that it's complete BS from start to finish. Okay, um, you mean that but maybe... Uh, see, I don't really care if people... if people. I don't really react very badly against people who say that uh, SARS-CoV-2 doesn't exist. It doesn't bother me particularly. I mean, it's not, it's not quite the same, I'd say, as with 9-11. Oh, was it thermite or... Dr. Judy Wood, it doesn't matter, you know, David Icke's line. It's not quite the same. Because one, you know, one being proved wrong doesn't doesn't justify any kind of 
It doesn't justify any return to the official story. So the reluctance not to go too far, in some cases, comes simply through evidence rather than because of op a concern over optics or, you know, oh, my God, things like that. Oh, my God, that's, that's crazy. Oh, the lizards and things like that. My personal view is if it's real, it's real. If it's not real, it's real. If the lizards are real, you mention the lizards. If it's not real, don't mention them. Things like that. I mean, I understand the difficulty of shoving too many red pills down people's throats at once. And believe me, if I was talking, if I was sitting here talking to someone about UFOs and 9-11, I would not volunteer any information about the Queen being a lizard. But if they asked me outright, like Andrew Neil did to David Icke on, on the, the politics show, David answered immediately without hesitation and simply without any qualification, yes. And that's the, that's the right thing to do, I think. Eamon continues. One argument for more moderate scepticism of official narratives is no doubt that it appears more reasonable. <coughs> um, yeah, I mean, some people make that point. I, as I just explained, I don't, I don't think that is necessarily the right way to go about it. But I think that that's a huge mistake because the people pushing the official narratives and those who believe them clearly couldn't care less about being reasonable or they wouldn't say or think what they do in the first place. Sorry, but I think Sargon on this and other issues is pretty weak source. I don't see any need to play the puppet master's game by accepting any part of their narrative at face value. If that was, if 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 indeed, you know, this was a Lee Rigby event, then no. But uh, the problem is, I don't see, firstly, any reason for it. I don't see any evidence that Sarah Everard is a Lee Rigby, and secondly, I don't. There's, it, I don't really anticipate it on theoretical grounds because I can't think of any reason why the Illuminati would actually stage something like that. With, with Manchester, it's obvious. I mean, it's this fear of terrorism thing. It's obvious, isn't it? Like with 9-11. It's a mini 9-11, essentially. But, you know, what's, what, does this, what does this achieve? Faking a murder of a young woman by a policeman. I, I suspect my, my proposition, my model, my theoretical model is more likely to be true, which is this was a real event. Sarah Everard was a real person who was kidnapped and murdered by this cop. The, the, the policeman, when murdering her, was actually, a, a, as I say, in order to just basically get rid of the evidence by getting rid of the, the kidnapped victim because the, comp the security had been compromised. As a result, then, he then, then it, because, it's, because it's too late to cover it up completely, they have to portray it as basically he is a, a murderer who kills her for his own motives, and he's, work he's working alone. And there's no bigwig at the top who ordered her. To him to procure her. If he tries to squeal, then, as I said, uh, during the trial or during questioning, a suicide will be arranged. Or a heart condition. Um, Charles Unleashed says on Sarah Everard, <clears throat> so allegedly 90% of sexual crimes in the UK are not followed up on. Makes me wonder if the religion of these salients has anything to do with it. B.Z. Garson says, any religion? Any specific religion? Where did you get the percentages from? All right, I think you're referring to grooming gangs here. And, yeah, that is a huge concern. I mean, several people have made this point. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I do I do actually wonder. I mean, this is something that Sargon was talking about and Morgoth's Review and several other people. You know, if um, Wayne, Co Wayne Cousins is like a, a white guy. And if he hadn't been, would we see candles on Clapham Common? It's a good point, yeah. But that's feminist for you, you know. They 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 are selective over. They they only do what they do when they feel they have a pass. Yarlan Zay said on Sarah Everard, if it happened on the way home from a friend's house at nine p.m., and it was a special forced police officer who committed the offence, why a six p.m. curfew for all men? That doesn't make sense. It tarnishes all men as being guilty and doesn't address that it was a police officer. Uh, if the risk is nine p.m., why six p.m.? Well, Yarlan, welcome to the batshit crazy. Up topsy turvy, completely unjust and illogical world of feminism. That's that's it. Yeah, B.Z. Garson points out it was one crazy suggestion by one Baroness in the Lords. It was laughed at. It was laughed out of court. Well, it was it was never got to court unless you define the House of Lords as a court, and it is the highest court in the land. But um, it's part of the legislature and the judiciary. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, B.Z. Um, it was a horrible thing to say. I know that if a male politician made a similar humorous satirical hyperbole about women, 
it would not it would be treated with the utmost seriousness he'd probably have to resign it was a disgusting thing she said even more disgusting that mark drakeford and a couple of other people like picked it up and ran with it before they realized it wasn't serious the very fact they even thought it was serious is scary <clears throat> these are see these are these are the pe kind of people like who would say well if it was presented as a bill in parliament they would, they would give it a reading that's scary but well, apart from that yarlan <laughs> yarlan says absolutely right you know i mean it doesn't have to make sense yarlan that's the point you, you you can't like say to them well look that doesn't that's not fair or well, that's not true because they'll say so what so what if it's not fair so what if it's not true we are women and we are this is our, these are our feelings you see Hmm. Chris Bird says on the same video, some controversial views there, Ben. Yeah. And so I'm not. I'm not actually. I'm not. I'm not like a, a hot shock shock here. I'm just saying what I. I know it's controversial. I don't. I don't do things because they're controversial. I'm not that kind of presenter. But sometimes things are. Unfortunately, the more I learn about the creatures that run our world, the more I see this sort of behaviour. I also prefer to live in a world where the Illuminati don't exist. Me too. I mean, um, I want. This is what I mean, and we we have to become the stony ground to use Jesus's to adapt Jesus's parable of the sower, so that the seed of the the, the Illuminati are only here because we're fallow ground for them to grow. If we become the stony ground, we can we can stop them growing here. This is that simple. Chris Bird says on Ian R. Crane dies. Nice tribute, Ben. Thanks, Chris. And I miss him. I bet you miss him too. Yeah, don't you? Um, and D says on F. Sarah Everard. Sadly, I think you're right there, Ben. Yeah. We'll we'll see what happens, and we'll see how it goes. It's, um, Sam Robottom says on Sarah Everard. The question should be: Who was Sarah Everard? Has very as very good search can find no trace of her. Is this another psyop with crisis actors? playing leading roles i think so that's kind of what iman padima was suggesting um i haven't i haven't heard of anyone researching her not finding any trace of her i mean is that obviously like things are staged such as the joe cox thing such as manchester arena you know this is something that rich planet specializes in i wonder if richard is i wonder if richard is going to do it i mean i'm on his mailing list so i'd get an email if, if that actually happened but I wonder if Richard is going to do a pro. Richard may well mention this in one of his in one of his upcoming talks. I don't know. Just I'm looking at my emails now, just in case he he's just put up a video about it. I don't because he tends to do his videos in series. He takes a couple of months off, then does more another series. That's how he works. Um, but you know, I don't. It's possible, you know, possible. Um. Andy Bird, age 33, report missing on the 3rd of March, 3-3. Three, three, yeah, 3-3 three, three coincidence, question mark. It is it is an odd thing. I mean, it's the, 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 the 3s and the 33s, all the 3s, it's, it's a Masonic thing, yeah. David Smith, yes, the one thing conspiracy theorists deny exists is coincidence. Um, David Smith, we, I, I personally don't deny there is such things as coincidence. What I do deny is that coincidence can be used as an explanation to dismiss anything that is physically possible i mean did you did you watch my skeptic video the the one the, the best one to watch is the most recent truth seekers northeast one i'm going to do a hapanwo show about this next week as well probably but you know if if you if you just throw coincidence at everything then you can just say everything's a coincidence however any, anything physically possible that happens in the universe can be dismissed as a coincidence regardless of how implausible or unlikely it is if someone wins the lottery five weeks in a row, there's no fraud involved. It's just a coincidence. You can say that, and you might be right. That's the point. So I, I personally, I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's any conspiracy theorists who d deny everything. Co coincidence exists. It does exist, but it's overused as a dismissal by skeptics. Charles Unleash said, "You do know that numerology was not invented for the modern Western numerical system, yes?" Well, there's different kinds of numerology. I mean, there's the one that Ellis Taylor talks about. There's, there's several other sorts as well. <clears throat> well. We have a thread. We have a thread. Sarah Everard. Steve Mumbling. I just heard a great line in a TV series. 
Conspiracy theories just make stupid people feel clever. Hits the nail on the head, I reckon. All right. Explanation, please, Steve? Explanation? Any more details? Because that's, uh, that's just a, one liner from a TV series. What's the TV series, then? Colonel Bogies? Charles Unleashed says, I'm not really convinced at all by the numerology connections people are making. It only works with modern Western numerical systems and the way we are doing it. Numerology doesn't even work for itself in the way considering where it originated from. Well, from what I could gather, Charles, it, it originates from several different areas. Just the, the way that mathematics emerged independently in, in many different cultures. <clears throat> David Smith says to Charles, But Charles, oh, another sarcastic comment from David. Look at this insert crazy claim quote unquote it confirms it and it, if it doesn't and if it doesn't confirm it then it must be part of the cover-up you can't win with the irrational you know but i could make a similar claim but i could say the same thing about skeptics look at this insert coincidence here it confirms if and if it doesn't confirm it it's probably just it's probably just woo woos making it up or it's imagination yeah you know. charles unleashed david smith to david smith Astrology developed when there was no Western numerical system, so it's nonsense. What about the Egyptian, My, um, Mauryan, Hindu, Ar Hindu, Ar Arabic, Roman, Greek, Asian systems? Correct. Yeah, but that's not a. That doesn't mean that Western numerology doesn't exist. Have you ever read Break? Was it Breaking Out the Matrix by by Ellis Taylor? I do recommend that. Steve mumbling, Sister Charles unleashed. With numerology, you could prove the Queen of England is a shape-shifting lizard from outer space. It's absolute rubbish. Well, leaving aside the sarcasm, I don't think you can, Steve. David Smith says, Some are stupid. Flat earthers are usually low on the education level, so there is some truth in that. But you've mentioned the driving factor before. The feeling of belonging to a community where people who might not have much stature in life are recognised there. When I was deep into conspiracies, it was certainly a pull I felt. Unfortunately, in this video, Ben uses a lot of conjecture. It's like he wants to address the issues involved, but he's going after secret societies that sadly it's a wasted effort. Yeah, look, I admit it's conjecture, but I, I've explained why I think it's, it's the right thing to, to s s talking about my conjecture and speculation based on the odd factors of this case is the correct thing to do. As for the first bit, well... Um, you know, there's all kinds of psychological talk about that. I mean, what did, did you see my video where I go to see Karen Douglas? Do, Dr. Karen Douglas from the University of Kent spoke at Greenwich Skeptics in the pub. I went along, I did a little reportage about it. Check that out. Because she, she brings this up and I reply to her there. But, you know, I think it's it's easy to like say that there's maybe there is... Maybe this is a fact. Maybe I mean, I do feel I am part of a community. I do feel like maybe this does give my life meaning when it otherwise wouldn't have meaning and maybe I wouldn't be able to have a community I could be a part of. It's very difficult now for, for people, especially white people, to, to find any community in life. But, you know, I mean, I did have a... a I was a member of a profession that had that. So um, it seems... Was I up? Yeah, I, I was actually, I was a porter when I became conspiratorially aware, yeah. Um, but it's it's not an explanation of why, it doesn't necessarily explain why what we state, factually, is, is incorrect. It doesn't, it doesn't. It does not disprove what we state at all. Everything you could say there may be true, yet everything that we say could still be factually true. The two are not mutually exclusive. <clears throat> Okay, until this is David, until he can prove what he's talking about, we have uh, we have the evidence we need. M people murder people. For, hang on, until he can prove what he's talking about, we have the evidence we need. No, we don't. No, we don't. The odd factors of the case deserve explanation, and what's been given, the explanation that's been given is: I know that it's an ongoing criminal case. We'll hear more when there's a trial, if there's a trial. Um. And but at the moment, you know, these odd, these odd elements of the case do need to be speculated upon. People murder people, says David, I know, for all kinds of reasons, adding layers upon layers of cover-ups and conspiracy to a situation won't get you any closer to discovering and dealing with the causes of these abhorrent behaviours. It'll lead them down the garden path trying to catch fairies. No, no, quite the opposite. People murder people. But when there's odd factors involved in a crime, the crime becomes different. The crime deserves to be looked at from another angle other than the 
than what you get within the legal system, which is what's happening right now, which is what's we're he what we're hearing within <clears throat> the news. People like myself have a, I was going to say we have a right, I say we have a duty to do that. Steve Mumling says underneath to David Smith, a seriously held belief that the Queen of England is a shape-shifting lizard from outer space is not indicative of intelligence. Well, it is, Steve, if the Queen of England is a shape-shifting lizard from outer space, doesn't it? That is your entire thesis is dependent on that fact. Charles says to Steve Mumbling, The Queen has been around corgis and horses all her life. If she were an alien in disguise, the poor little critters would be freaking out. Well, um, some of them, they're, they're very well trained, little critters, Charles. And, you know, and these, these creatures, horses and dogs can get used to things. The same way people can, like members of her staff and things like that. Ed Kaler says on what happened to Sarah Everard, Feminism is a top-down plague on humanity. Correct. What do you think about the people who say it never happened, they were all crisis actors? I've just explained, Ed, I, I've seen no reason to think that, that it was some kind of deliberately staged event. I think it was a, I think it was a cock up by the, the, the perpetrators who then came up with a fallback position, which involves saying basically it was just this guy killed her well, on his own, yeah. But Be Bex Cobham says on Sarah Everard, she was probably kidnapped to order for someone who better to be a middleman than one of the police. Well, Bex, yes, Bex, that is, that is kind of my, my entire, that's entire, my entire hypothesis in a nutshell in the video, yeah. John Frum says on Oxford Graffiti 21, good take on EastEnders, Ben. Thanks, John, yeah. East End, oh, East End is mental poison. It really is. It's, I say, as I said in the video, I just can't bear to watch it. I really can't. I think people who do it regularly just must build up a tolerance of some kind. We have another thread here on Sarah Everard, B. Z. Garson. <clears throat> oh my God, what's this? Hang on. The trigger warning on the video was meant for Ben. No, it wasn't. <laughs> ben gets triggered by vocal, strong-minded women who are pissed off with male violence and attitudes. No, I don't. I get triggered. I, I don't. I get annoyed by lying and hateful women who exploit a crime and a tragedy for their political campaign. Ben gets triggered by Jess Phillips, a Labour, Labour MP on International Women's Day read out all the names of all the women killed by male violence in the preceding year. She's been doing it since she was elected to Parliament. Oh, she, she and Sargon are a cad, man. They, they, it's hilarious to see those two. Well, I, I found it annoying that she, she did it, The reason because the reason she does it is because she's trying to promote the idea that this is basically some kind of tacit, natural um, agreement by white men to do these horrible crimes. She doesn't mention instantly the men, the, the men who are killed by men. Who are, they're two hundred and fifty percent times more. She doesn't mention any of those because they don't matter because they're only white men. Yeah, I get, I get upset by that. I get annoyed by that. Is that unreasonable? Hmm. Oh, and then he's BZ. Then uh, <laughs> Ben, uh, BZ. Then um, it basically anticipates everything I've just said by now. Ben then goes on a fantastical, basically saying that what I said wasn't true. See my latest video. Oh, what's this BZ? Let's have a look. What's this? This is BZ's channel. Um, oh, no, ch no videos. Right. Well, your video has you've got a you got like you got like a list. You got a playlist here, but it's uh, all other uh, uploads on other channels. So I don't know what you mean by your latest video. Um, ben then goes on a fantastical conspiracy. Um, Oh, sorry, see my list below. Sorry, I thought it was said video. No, sorry. I don't care if you're offended. How brave and radical. Looks like a stereotypical stalker in the park. Oh, yeah. Ben then goes on a fantastical, consp fantastical conspiracy theory that follows a thinly veiled QAnon narrative. You're brainwashed, mate. No, it's not a thinly veiled QAnon narrative. It is a perfectly open QAnon narrative, which I talk about because I think Q is real, yeah. I would even say, sorry, I would even say that to Sarah Everard's parents. No, you wouldn't. You're full of shite. If you did, you'd be heartless, cruel, psychotic. I'd probably get chin. No, I, no, 
Oh, really? So, okay, let me get it straight. He goes on to say, it's okay to say it from your safety if you're isolated walking around on a webcam. Anything is a game for a conspiracy nut, even the recent death of his young woman. Plenty of warm bones to pick over. Really? Okay, BZ, right? So if you if you're walking down the street one day and you see an old lady crossing the road and suddenly a gang of thugs grab her, beat her, beat her up and steal her handbag, right? Imagine that happens. And you run off. And then they run off, taking it away. You go up to her, she's dead. Right. So what do you do? Do you go on a fantastical conspiracy rant stating to, to, the, to that lady's grandchildren and children, she got hit by a car. I'm very, very sorry. Right. Or, w or would you be full of shite, be heartless, cruel and psychotic and probably get shin to say, you know, what, what happened? Two guys approached her. They attacked her. They assaulted her and they stole her handbag. Is that what you do, eh? Is that picking on warm body bones, is it? Is that what you do? Is that is is lying about it and saying she got hit by the car? That's the kind thing to do, is it? That's the respectful thing to do, is it, B said? Think about it. Think it over. Right. Here's a here are a few names of the 120 names that Phillips read out. The list is far from being exclusive white, the convicted perpetrators. I've barely got halfway through, it's too depressing. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I, I, obviously, so so that in that case, you're saying that. Um, hang on. What happened there? Hang on. Oh, it's just gone back. Okay. Well, I, I, I was guessing what Jess Phillips was doing there, and maybe I was wrong. Okay. Fair enough. Michael Snow, Dan, Michael Snow says, a young black lad gets stabbed. No one notices. Young beautiful girl gets killed. Massive impact. Not saying this is an awful event, but there was a massive imbalance. Well, it. There is a massive imbalance. I think it's it's probably got to do with the, with the with the fact that I think if a young black man was actually killed in the way Sarah Everard was, it would be regarded as a tragedy. I mean, look at Stephen Lawrence. Unfortunately, knife crime, you, you know, black people ki getting killed is is very is unfortunately too far too common, and very often, more often than not, the perpetrators of the same race. The reason Stephen Lawrence was made a cause celeb was because. His killers were white. The reason Sarah Everard has been made a course led by the feminists is perpetrator was white. Uh, but again, all this distracts from the real problem, which is what I just explained. Which is that the that there there's, there may be more to it than this. He may have been acting on orders for somebody. You see what I mean? B. Z. Garson says here. I, to, to Michael Snow, I agree with you to a greater extent. Violence against young black lads is a major social issue, whether the perpetrator be black or white. It's worthy of analysis and debate, but you won't find it being addressed in any of Ben's videos. Oh, really? What am I doing now? <coughs> the reason being, it's a subject that's hard for him to connect with. It is an outlandish conspiracy theory. Oh, B said, <coughs> beef, come on. How many, I've laid into cultural Marxism and political correctness so many times on my channel. I, I've, I haven't gone on about it like Sargon has, but I've gone on about so many other things. Bezos says, My comments were strictly about the content of his video. He's becoming more right-wing, often spouting right-wing tropes picked up from his predominantly right-wing consumption. White male oppression, a mocking disdain for vocal, strong-minded women, especially, that don't, especially those that don't ideologically align with him. His worship of Trumplicism, Trump lickism and his propagation of the ludicrous QAnon narrative, which he's managed to weave into his video. <clears throat> he's also made a video while, while a while back questioning the veracity of the Holocaust. Of course, he framed it in a cuddly bubbly way. Hang on a minute. W what video was that? Could you point to it? I don't think I've ever made a video on that subject. I can't make it. If I make a video on that subject, half my viewers will go to jail. So where have I made a video on that subject? Go on, show it to me. Becoming more right wing. I mean, am I right wing? I mean, I've right wing tropes. I, I say what I think is correct. I mean, there is, as you know, there's an overlap between like the alt right and the conspiracy sphere. Is everything in the alt right completely useless? Is everything in the alt right evil? And I have a disdain for what? I have a disdain for strong minded vocal women like Jess Phillips. Jess Phillips has been dining out on one little comment made by Sargon of Akkad years ago. Don't you, I don't believe I don't I don't respect her sincerity at all. If I made a mistake about the list she read out, fair enough, I apologise for that. But do, don't you don't you see how she she Jess Phillips herself has amplified 
what Sargon said. You know, this I wouldn't even comment. And Sargon, therefore, has also amplified it. Don't you see? It's a symbiotic relationship. Those two are both... They're both... They're both parasitical of each other's positions. If, which is the definition of symbiosis. He despises Jess Phillips, MP. Why? Well, I've just explained. I think she is a man-hater. I think she's a misandrist. I think she's a cultural Marxist. And I think she's dishonest. I think if, if she really... I, I, I think she, I personally think she, she, she would shut up about what Sargon said if she was honest. Hmm. Why, if he bothered to do any research, he calls himself a researcher, he would find she represents one of the most ethnically diverse constituencies in the UK. She's been re-elected to Parliament three times. She has a track record, also before becoming an MP, of championing against violence against women, from sexual harassment, domestic violence, to murder of women by men. Right. So she doesn't care, for example, so she, does she care about violence against men? Does she care about m women who murder men or men who murder men? Women, women don't often murder men, actually. That's quite rare. But men murder men 250% the rate they, men, they, they do against women. Now, if you think that's one of the reasons I, I don't like Jess Phillips, that's one of the reasons I don't like what she does. It's, it's, li it's a lie by omission, what she's doing. On International Women's Day in Parliament... She read that, yeah, I was talking about uh, the, this she read out. His suggestion that she would cherry pick only white males. Okay. Obey, all right, I made a mistake about that. I've already said I made a mistake about that. A biased right wing trope. Okay, well, it was a wrong one. It was the incorrect one. <clears throat> this was my reason for posting a small list. Okay. And his theory regarding the murder of that young woman is 100% QAnon batshit crazy. No, it's not. It's not. Firstly, okay, firstly... Um, she does this on International Women's Day, which I think, the thing about International Women's Day, I do wonder why it exists. Really, every day is International Women's Day, isn't it, at the moment? Um, I think if an MP read out the names of men who'd been killed on International Men's Day, 15th of November, what do you think would happen? He'd probably be deselected. And probably Jess Phillips would be one of the ones calling for his deselection. Um, as, and as for the uh, theory regarding the, the Q, what you call QAnon batshit crazy, I told you exactly why I believe what I, what I said what I did, and I'm, I don't apologise for it. If you think it's batshit crazy, watch, sorry, read, read Transformation of America. Read, um, what's it called? Something for the, what was it, uh, for the reasons of national security. That was her and Phillips' second book. So that was um, Cathy O'Brien and Mark Phillips' second book. I just for the record, I'm a white, married, working-class bloke. I detest political extremes, whether they be left or right extreme. They are two cheeks of the same ass. I'm also truth. I like my truth delivered with facts, not bias and wild fantasy speculation. Okay, well, as I said, B said, I don't care if you're. What well, I know, some of you, I knew some of you would react this way to my video. So, so be it. I don't take back a single word I said in there. <clears throat> Michael Snow says, fair enough, I hate polarisation, I hate anything far, but I believe in listening to both sides and taking the best of both sides. If there is such a thing, I believe, I'm adult enough to decipher what is shit and what may be fact, and I don't need anyone telling me not what to believe. Let your truth be built up by listening to who you believe and your best research. And what's this here? I don't... Whether that's a general comment or a personal dig at me, I haven't told you what I believe. My piece about Phillips reading out the women's names. All right, I've, then he just repeats what I said again, which I've already admitted I made a mistake about. My opinions on Ben's bias, the colour of his beliefs, are informed opinions based on his many previous videos. Yeah, including the one which you well, the one which you say I did in a chubby bubbly way. Tell me what it is. <clears throat> uh, blog articles and a couple. Of listeners to his radio shows, quote unquote radio shows. That what they what are they if they're not radio shows? Then eh, BZ? My opinions on his crazy conspiracy theory regarding the alleged murderer is just plain old common sense. No, it's not. No, it's not. I'm asked what I've just said is completely legitimate. I think. As I said, just tell them the old lady got run over by a car. BZ, go on. Be be sensitive. Be caring. Be responsible. Be rational. Be a, you know, be, be a, be a non-conspiracy theorist by saying that. Tell them the old lady got run over by a car. That's the right thing to do, isn't it? 
Ben has not demonstrated one iota of research in his video. It's just a rambling rant. A good title for some of his videos. A literal rambling rant with Ben, or walking heads. Oh, very funny, walking heads. Firstly, I, I did explain in the video that it is speculation. I didn't say I had any evidence. I said I was making people aware of a possibility, and I'm right to do that. I'm correct to do that, based on what's happening in this world with people being kidnapped for procurement. If you don't like that, I'll tell that to the people who are being procured, BZ. Because if you, that's what I want to put a stop to. As I explained. All right, we move on to um, Suzanne Clark. What happened? Ben, it's after six. <laughs> yes, Suzanne, I was breaking the curfew myself right then and there. Yeah, because it was sun. It was sunset. It was after half past six. Was the sunset? Yeah. Ian R. Crane Memorial live stream. DJ B two. Ian will be missed. He was a good chap. He was, wasn't he? DJ. Yeah, I'm going to miss him certainly. Um, Ian R. Crane, someone. Huge arsehole actually posted on here saying, unfortunately, I feel really bad about this, but um, he said, what, what, IRC died? When? He hadn't heard about it. I'm sorry to break it to you, mate. I really, that was a terrible way for you to find out. I'm really sorry you found out watching the video. <clears throat> Any point. Um, there we go. Um, International Click says, R.I.P. Ian. Crafty Nihilist said, um, oh, 050, a rare occurrence. We actually get to hear Ben's alters on live TV. Oh, this is, oh, the, I was, rep I, you can actually hear my voice coming through the, the speakers, can't you, or through the recording. <clears throat> Goonlove says, RIP. Oh, thanks. Goonlove. So that's on the same video. Goonlove says testing on Ian R. Crane Memorial live stream. Oh, Goonlove, it works fine, honestly. Um, if you had a problems posting by any chance, because if you have, several other people have reported problems posting um, comments. Hmm. Goonlove says, is this live? And Tanya come in and says, not now. It was live 7 p.m. Friday. Yeah, oh, Goonlove, I, I put up a notice beforehand. I don't know if you saw it, but at least 24 hours beforehand, I will put up a notice telling you when there's going to be a, a live stream. Tanya Cummings says, nice stream, Ben. Ian would be chuffed. Sorry, I dropped off back to sleep before the end. But I listened to the rest when I woke up. Hope you do another good video soon. I like your style and content. R.I.P. Dear Ian. Still can't quite, can't, can't quite believe it. Thanks. Thanks very much. <coughs> Thanks, Ta Tanya. Greta Robinson says, sorry I missed the live. Catching up now. We'll listen to the Tribute Radio Show as well. First saw, on, first saw you on Edge Media with Richard. Ian was an inspiration. His enthusiasm for truth was infectious. A genuine, lovely guy who I had the pleasure to meet. I first saw David Noakes on there too, talking about the EU. All those shows you mention here, I remember. Happy days. Happy days, Greta. Yeah, I mean, ev I think everything we like, we really are. It's just wonderful, actually, the way that Ian touched so many people and is, has left such an impression that there's almost like a kind of, there is a sense of happiness and satisfaction that he completely, in a sense, drew the line under such a wonderful life. I haven't watched the, I actually did find out the memorial services on Matthew Williams' channel. I haven't actually watched it yet. I might watch it when I've done this. I need to watch it at some point. Michael Snow says, everything that happens has to be polarised as fuck. Hijacking a woman's death for their agenda. Sick of... Uh, yeah. It did. Yeah, it was pretty horrible. I mean, I... I it's not. I didn't just say that for the purpose of the video. I mean, I saw the news stories coming out before the video, and it was just horrible. Yeah. Tessa says on Ian R. Crane Memorial live stream, I had a good friend who took the chemo radiation route for colon cancer and died anyway, miserably, as he was burnt inside. Some folks choose to let nature take their course rather than it that would be horrible, horribly miserable. He was 85, very sad way to go. Yeah, it's, um, it is, it's, it's pretty awful. I mean, if it's for certain cancers that are very aggressive, and I know that certain people, like, they're told, look, what they actually say. I mean, they don't know about the alternatives, and 
you know, there's n there's no guarantee when you get cancer that anything will work will save you. But what the skeptics will say is they'll say things like, well, you know, the cut it off and poison the stump thing, it's the only treatment that works. It gives you a better chance than anything else. When is that true? According to the research that I've seen, a lot, a lot of people question that now. I'm sorry about your friend. I really am. That's very, very sad. Um, it's, it's an awful thing that, yeah, definitely. Tanya Cummings says on the Ian R. Crane Memorial live stream. Hi, Ben. I hope it's okay to do this for anyone who'd like to find peace and closure. Here's a link to the video of the live stream of Ian's funeral. All right. Yeah, that's, that's truth seekers. You know, someone posted in the comments of your preview adv advice of your tribute, which you've now taken down. I was a little trepidatious, not knowing how I would react, but I actually found it uplifting to hear the lovely eulogies and the sensitive and caring funeral director who reminded me somewhat of Ian himself. And Brian Gerrish's tribute was really heartfelt and comforting. I found peace, comfort and sense and a sense of closure. And I hope this helps others too. If you don't think it appropriate, Ben, just delete my comment. That's fine. Here's the link. Allow 45 minutes. Yeah, this is, this is Ian R. Crane's funeral, which you can get on... It's on the Secret Vault, which is uh, Matthew Williams' video. Um, I appreciate Matthew. I appreciate you covering this. I really do. It was. Um, it's. Uh, I'm glad because not because of course, not least because of the restrictions, most of us couldn't get there. Charlie says on reply to comments 39, "Will you be doing a census protest or a census video this year? Um, I think it's more important than ever to hear your views on the matter." Marky Boy says, ours must have got lost. Oh, right, you did as well. Well, Charlie, I actually do have a a little link here for you, which I'll, I'll actually share with you here. Um, and I, I also, also, if you've been watching all this video, you'll know that I mentioned, I talk about this earlier in the year. Uh, Charlie, hang on. Here's the details. Okay, I'm typing and nothing's happening. That often happens. There you go. And now I have to remember what, what I f forgot last time is to also put the put the notice back on my clipboard. <clears throat> um, Lemsip says on Ian R. Crane Memorial live stream, I saw him four times speak, which is more than I saw from any other speaker. I remember him often hiring a committee room in the Holiday Inn as he wanted to talk. His talks to be accessible as possible. Though people had to pay to cover his costs, as room as room hire in that hotel is quite expensive. Yes, and of course, uh, um, David and the, our skeptic bunch, David, Charles Unley, Steve Mumbling, they would say, "Oh, that's Ian R. Crane making money." Yes, they, he's making people pay for the hotel room, the committee room. Why doesn't he just let them in for free? And he's got all that money. Yeah, all that money. He's got so much. He, he made money off that off the bloody sale of his house. Which he basically has to make last. So he, Ian R. Crane had a caravan, as I said. He lived in a bloody caravan. Well, he got very excited once. He told me this when, when he st stayed with me in Sewer Stain. He's saying, I've got two caravans now. Hey, two caravans, luxury. Yes, goodness me. Oil company executive on 50 grand a year to living in a caravan, doing what you believe. At some point, you know, you guys, you, you're making a fool of yourself by, by keeping on with this. Ooh, he's in it for the money. You really, you're just making yourself look stupid. <clears throat> New video, Unboxing Honest. <laughs> Tina Silver says, napkin folding, question mark. Hi, Tina, how are you? Hope you're all right. And that was a good first comment there. You got in there first on that one. Hmm. In our Crane Memorial live stream, Bluebeam says, Trump on Fox News also said people could get their vax. Also admitted that he and Melania had also took it. And took credit for the roll had it took credit for the rollout like Boris. They're just normal politicians, and people are just hallucinating that they are some sort of other entity. Everyone, everyone on the dark side, them lol. Steve O seventy one said Trump, Boris, and their like have got the vax, just a placebo to con the masses. We're all in this together. Um, Blue beam. What Boris has done, Boris has really gone over to the dark side, and it's been a huge disappointment. And Steve O seventy one, yeah. Um, I was really upset, and I actually tweeted at him. You know, come, you know, come back to us. Don't turn away from it. Be like, be like Darth Vader, and turn away from it. But um, 
what Trump said, Trump is very interesting because obviously Trump, Trump has, I think, has been forced into this position. But he said he respects people's freedoms. When he was talking about the vaccine, he always makes this point. He always says something, even if it's just a hint, that he will never, he would never advocate for any kind of forced, any kind of um, constructive force when it comes to vaccination. That is, either they make you take it, that is, they tie you down and stick a needle in your ass, which is the most obvious way of forcing people or they just do it more craftily by saying you know that sticks hexenhammer talks about this of course you're perfectly free to refuse the vaccine if you want but you can't get a job and you can't get on a bus and you can't go on holiday and you can't go in a pub you don't mind do you that's the, that's the definition of constructive force gary robinson says on unboxing honest some possible lady action on the card for you there ben pride and dignity brother oh dear. Every time I mention a woman's name, it's like, oh, lady action. Uh, unless it's Agent Rin, of course. <laughs> As Charles says, I do a video with Agent Rin and then I go, um, oh, she's a honey. She's my honey trap. <laughs> Crafty Nice says, Ben, I demand a makeup tutorial. <laughs> you know, Crafty, it may be the only way I can stay on YouTube. It really might be. Uh, Gary Robinson says, maybe men's grooming video with a focus on ball shaving. Hairstyling for the follically challenged, says, says Devo71. Hapano cooking, says Snarnock. Snarnock. And I'd say in text underneath, I'll see what I can do. As for hairstyling, maybe Richard D. Hall is the man to ask you. Yeah. As for Hapano cooking, Snarnock, if you look through my catalogue, you'll see I've done a couple of cookery videos. Hapano ice cream, Hapano yogurts, and what was that? Hapano trifle, which is not my recipe. It was invented by Port Sophie the Porter's poet and, and her partner. Charles Unley says to me, I demand a makeout up tutorial with Rin. Oh, well, Rin will probably be better at it than me. Yeah. Charles says, I'd in reply to something called Ben's lightly moisturised rebuttals. Oh, what happened to. Where's he gone then, anyway? I can't see him. Your comments keep vanishing on my stuff, says Charles. Yeah. Um, I've noticed this person called Ben's. Ben's lightly moisturised rebuttals. We used to be a channel on it. It seems to have disappeared. And he had like a really interesting avatar, which was me <laughs> with a picture of me on it. And it's gone. So I don't know what happened there. Jock of Asia says on unboxing, that was cool that the both of you got on the same subject. A nice bag of quality books that were given to you. Dr. Fowler is great. All the best, mate. Yeah, honestly, Jock. Yeah, fantastic stuff. I mean, obviously, this lady, Rachel, I mean, she I don't think she's into it, but her brother is Andrew. And I've not met him since we were little kids. He's obviously quite sophisticated. I mean, I wouldn't... Joseph Farrell, I mean, I... See, if I met someone new to, cons to the conspiracy, <coughs> I would... Um, I'd be quite happy to... Um, if they say, well, what should I read? Should I read something? Can you recommend anything to help me sort of... To educate myself in this, this new world I've just entered? I wouldn't give them Joseph Farrell. I wouldn't. I would give them David Icke to read, or Andy Thomas, or William Cooper... Prop, but Joseph Farrell, I'd say no. Get through the basic stuff first and then go on to Joseph Farrell because Farrell is far more sophisticated. If you give Farrell to somebody new, so the, they just won't, they won't understand it. It'll be beyond them. Hmm. Gary Robinson says, Ben, mate, there's a good Italian film around 50 years ago called Romanzo Criminale, which tells the story of a bunch of street kids who have their own gang and eventually grow up to work for the Mafia. This leads them to be involved with the various other shady organisations until they are eventually asked to do the train station job that is talked about in the book you mentioned at the start of the video. It makes you wonder if they're trying to tell us something with the storyline of that movie in regards to those events. Blimey, blimey Gary, yeah, that's um, Operation Gladio. Romanzo Criminale. Oh, my. It's Italian. I mean, I wonder if it's... Let's just see if I can find it. Because that's very interesting that they, they use the, the mafia because... Yeah, it's a film, yeah. It's there's a thing here, it's set in the seventies. Yeah. Here was the IMDB. Oh, there's a Wikipedia page for it. I prefer that to IMDB. Yeah. It's right. Won fifteen awards. Wow. Yeah, it looks good. It looks very interesting. Okay, well thanks very much. Thank you. I'll check I'll keep that pad tab open so I can check it out. Stephen Roach says on Unboxing Honest, Ben, quick correction, Biden didn't fall down the stairs on Air Force One, but up the stairs on Air Force One. Not once, but twice, but three times. Quite an achievement. All oh, right, OK. So he's, yeah, I've watched the video since then. I can see he was actually climbing up the stairs, you know. Mm. 
I'm boxing honest. Gary Robinson says, um, I'll put some text comments on here, actually. You know what, Ben? Oh, oh, once again, I forget. Go to the clipboard. You've got to put the clipboard on there. Mm. This makes an interesting format that you could make into regular videos. In other words, each month you get together a bunch of books covering different subjects and use them as jumping off points for discussion. Awesome. And I said on the thanks for the idea, Gary. It's a great one. The thing is, I've already done a video called Books on My Shelf, which you could find in my uploads. That's true. And Gary Robinson says, yeah, of course, I've watched that one, mate. Cheers. Yeah, it's, it's, there's, it's actually a two-parter. It's a long one. And Paul Armstrong says underneath here, hello, Paul. How come so some folk get personalised text replies and the rest of us have to watch an hour section of a reply to videos? We need consistency. And I said to un underneath, I says to Paul Armstrong, it's not favouritism, Paul. You know, you've always been my favourite, darling. It's because I just happened to be in a position to reply at the time the comment was made. It's that simple, Paul, honestly. We woo-woos are like that. We stick by our friends. Gary Robinson says on Unboxing Honest, I've always loved not the Nostradamus film, Ben. It's one of those forgotten movies that's always been, over that's been overlooked in regards to having a decent DVD or Blu-ray release. I recently discovered a slightly extended cut of that movie that features a number of additional scenes. The actor's name is uh, Chequi Carrario, by the way. All right. And Tanya Cummins says, can it be seen on the internet anywhere? If so, can you direct it to me, please? Thank you. I don't know, let's have a look, because it used to be on YouTube. I don't know if it still is. Let's have a look. Mm. But it's a very good film. Let's have a look. Uh, not, yes, it is there. It's if that's the if that is the movie, a sci-fi movie. No, it's not. No, I don't think that's it. Oh. No, that's not it. Okay, I can't find it right now. I don't have time to do a detail search. I will do it afterwards. It's a bloody good film. I, I didn't know it's not been on DVD or anything. Maybe it's on Amazon Prime. I'll, I'll check or. Or, or Netflix. Mind you, Netflix is, as I explained before, I'm, I'm sort of like, I'm using one of the Netflix from a, from a housemate. I wouldn't pay for it. But to be honest, I, I try looking for films on it. I think of a good film I want to see. Look, at, look up on Netflix, it's not there. They have a lot of, they don't have many older movies, you see. They have a lot of the newer ones. Someone made a video about Sleuth, this brilliant film with Michael Caine and Laurence Olivier. Um, it was made, recently remade, but with Jude Law and Michael Caine. Um, the remake is as good as a standalone movie, but as a remake, it's, I mean, remakes are all shit mostly anyway. Um, apart from Peter Jackson's King Kong, I can't think of any others. Um, but, you know, you can't get it anywhere. I mean, there's a, there's a poor quality version on YouTube. I've, luckily, I did get the DVD of it once. As you know, if you watch the... DVDs on my shelf video I made, but yeah, that deserves a proper DVD release. It really does. It's a fantastic movie. It's like a based on stage play. It's kind of stage play format, you know. And Charlie says um, you should do reviews of this kind of format. Really enjoyed it, Charlie. Thank you very much. But you know what? Um, I really appreciate that. But you know what? And Tanya Cummins says ditto. Well, you know what? Um, as I just said to um, Steve, what's it? To Gary Robinson. Thank you very much. But you know, just as I just said. Um, check out Books on My Shelf. It's on my catalogue. It's a two-parter, a very long video. And um, there's DVDs on my shelf as well. Where I, actually do, I actually do that. I'm glad if you like that. Yeah, there's really nice long videos you can watch. Unboxing Honest says, um, Excellent video, Ben. Some more stuff to add to my reading list. I've recently finished UFO Contacts in Italy. And from that I've ordered 50 of Amicicia by Stefano Breccia. And the Zanfretta case by Reno Stafford Tufano. Yeah, they're bloody good, those are. They're bloody good. I recall a summary in Timothy Good's latest book, but I did not realise that two whole books had been written and translated on those two cases. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, there's, entire, there's two entire chapters in what well, Earth and Alien Enterprise by Timothy Good, which was his most recent, and I think last book. He, he doesn't write anymore. But the Amicicia thing is amazing. Um, you know, there's a photo of this guy, Kenya, this big tall guy. Who's one of the aliens? And yeah, oh, Italy is uh, is an absolute hotbed for UFOs. Paula Harris is a good person to to look. She's an Italian lady. Actually, lives in the United States. Um, but she's studied all these Italian cases in detail. Snarnock says on Unboxing Honest, 
The video follows on from your bookshelf tour. Yeah, you remember that one, don't you? Yeah. Will you be doing another Hapanmo cooking video? Oh, if I could find a decent recipe, Snarnock. I mean, if you can think of one, definitely. Snarnock said, I hope you gave those books a good sniff. I always do that myself. The worst thing is when I get a second-hand book from a smoker. Oh, I love the smell of books. Oh, here we go. It's the end of hour number Ooh, four. Yeah, hour number four over. Um... I love the smell of new books, old ones especially. And, it, you know, this is what you can't get from Kindle. This is why I will not release the Roswell trilogy onto Kindle. Um, I only have it as paperback. But, yeah, I do love, I love, that's what, books are special. And some of them have a lovely smell to them, lovely musty old smell. And so you notice I do that. I, you, I do it out of habit, just smelling the books. Anyway, back in a minute. This is, this is going to be longer than I thought. Okay, I'm back. Yes. And so where was I? Yeah, unboxing B.Z. Garson. Uh, oh, we're on Unboxing Honest. Yeah, fit, it's got me four hours long now. This is what B.Z. Garson says. And then I gave her a signed copy of my latest book, Fifty Shades of Roswell Rising. <laughs> B.Z., are you that kinky, are you? <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, my goodness me. Now, that's sexual harassment. I actually, you know what? I actually read, um, I actually read Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, um, it was reasonably entertaining. Um, I ground my way through it, if that's the right terminology to use. Uh, I never read any of the sequels, but does it deserve to be a bestseller? Well, it's saying, does it deserve to be a bestseller? That's a bit like saying, well, it's, it's up to what people buy. Obviously, there's a market for that kind of thing. And so good luck. Good luck to the author. I mean, A.L. James has written something. People like it. She's she's doing well from it, you know. It's so uh, great. So, yeah, I, I, it's not signed. It's not signed. If I if I ever get E. L. James to sign the book, I'll send it to Jess Phillips. She'll like that. <laughs> now we have a, <coughs> again. We've got this disappearing person called <coughs> um, Ben's lightly moistured rebustles. Hmm. Unboxing honest. Steve Mumbling says, "You're right. You certainly have a pile there. A steaming pile." I knew you'd do that, Steve. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> Farrell has a PhD in patristics. What? Patristics. Patristics, whatever that is. He's not a physicist, isn't he? I thought he was. There's zero evidence for any sort of ancient technology. He spruiks his science fiction stories. Well, I mean, I've read... I haven't read... I've only read two... I think I've read two of his books. The ones about the, the, uh, the Nazis and the... And the technology, which I, I think actually is quite convincing. But, I mean, I've done entire reply videos for you on that. Charles Unley says, Farrell, who says that a water tower next to a rail track is really a UFO launch pad. Launch pad. That Farrell? Um, Steve Mumbling. Really? I'm guessing that one from Poland. Yeah, and Steve Mumbling says to somebody who has disappeared, it might as well be. Um... You wouldn't happen to be genocide, would you? Says um, Charles. Now, um, <coughs> the the water tower. Now, it's that's it. Now, it's actually Igor Witkowski is the guy you're thinking of. Um, he's he's worked with Far Farrell. Has actually um, cites him a lot in the book. There is a structure in what is today Poland. It's actually a, it's the uh, it is used to be part of Germany. It's today Poland because, of course, at the end of World War Two. Eastern Europe, basically, the, the borders were redrawn um, almost as radically as they were after World War One, And um, a lot of what used to be Germany became Poland. And it's at the, a place called the, the Wenceslas Mine. Now, there's a it's called the Flytrap. And it's supposedly part of a cooling tower from a power station, but uh, no one's, ever been, able to find, no one's ever, ever been able to find the rest of the power station or the remains of the power station. Yet at the same time, there's, um, there was a laboratory at the bottom of this mine led by uh, someone called Hans Kammler, who was an SS general and a, sci and a scientist, and who disappeared at the end of the war, although possibly he didn't disappear. He was, he got, he was sent to one of the, either to the, probably to the United States, maybe Britain, maybe the Soviet Union, under Operation Paperclip and given a fake identity, like so many others were. The people like Werner von Braun, who, who went under his own identity, were very rare. They were just the tip of the iceberg. But they, they talked, I mean, the whole thing, I mean, it's a really complicated story. But honestly, it, I don't think it was part of a water tower. I really don't. <coughs> I 
I, I do recommend um, Igor Witkowski. What he's, Igor Witkowski spoke at the Basis Project conference once. Fascinating chap. He actually took, um, what's his name? Nick, what's his name? The, the guy who did Billion Dollar Secret. Not Nick Broomfield. But he took this journalist from Change Defence Weekly into the tunnels underneath this supposed water tower. You can still see some of the equipment that's there. Um, Chris Bird says on Unboxing Honest. Hi, Ben. I at last learned some tech. I've got you up on my telly quite appropriately, don't you think? Oh, well, bigger the screen, the better, Chris. Bigger the screen, the better. Um, Zythantiops, hello, said to un Unboxing. That was really kind gesture, at least a couple of years' worth of reading there, Ben. I don't know about the others, but the Gladio book and the Babylon's Banksters are both really good reads. Thanks, Zythantiops. I, I've not read any of them. I've uh, not um, I've, the Farrell books that are there. I've not ones I've ever read. Hmm. Uh, get a job, you lazy crown is part one. Another old one. Local council jobs worth. That's a good name. Says any scroungers watching this, please continue to scrounge, as I believe you're scrounging off the government, not the taxpayers. Many suggest. Well, you know, if that's meant to be, um, if you, if you're trying to be satirical to what you think I'm going to say based on the simply the title of the video i suggest you watch the rest of the video i'm not sure exactly what point you're making there you 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 may find out that i'm not actually um having a go at people for being on the dole he says here would a ruler the same guy as a ruler says would a ruler rather take all of the income of 20 percent of the population or 20 percent of the income of all the population taxpayers are slaves yeah i mean taxation essentially is basically your pay you are forced to give some of your income to an institution and that that the percentage you're supposed to give keeps going up and up and up and up i mean i recommend stefan molyneux i mean i know i have a go at him sometime but he did a video on taxation it's really interesting he talks about how in the roman empire it was literally it was what you literally pay a penny on the pound in terms of income tax to the state when when you were in the roman empire Yet by the present day in the United States, that's like over over fifty percent. It's like fifty six percent, sixty percent. If you take into account income tax, national insurance, and also things such as stealth taxes on bus tickets, betting slips, VAT, etc., literally more than half the capital in the entire economy is forfeit to the state. What are they doing with all that money? Well, they're they're, they're spending it on. God knows what, God knows what, but some of it is going on way, more and more ways of, to imprison and control us. Taxation means we're forging our own shackles. It's disgraceful. <clears throat> Proselytising Orthodox Angora, Pentecostal Angora rabbit, says on Unboxing Honest, um, funny how so many conspiracy theorists send, send so much time and energy trying to convince themselves that they somehow suffer under oppression, but hidden tyranny at home... Well, simultaneously denying real oppression and the tyranny abroad. What? Who are these conspiracy theorists? I'm not one of them, rabbit. Are there others? It's like adrenochrome vampires are real. Yes. Better watch out for the shape-shifting lizards. I do. Vaccines are really mind control. Yes. But an ex-KGB secret policeman in the Kremlin... You mean Putin, yeah? Yeah. Putin was, yeah, he was in the KGB. He tried to track down that Igor, um, what's his name? Oleg Gordievsky. He tried to track down this guy. Here we go. This book is well, well worth reading. This is bloody good, this is. This is, um, you know, I'm into spy books at the moment. This is um, Oleg Gordievsky. He was, he's he actually still living in England. He's under house arrest still after all these years. And it may be because in, it, was in, it was in the early 80s, I think, 1982, that he defected. It was in the late Cold War. And the story of his escape is amazing. But the, the KGB officer who was charged with tracking him down was a certain young chap called Vladimir Putin. Hmm. Very interesting. But I mean, is that, I don't necessarily mean, I don't, I don't think that necessarily means there's anything sinister about Putin being in the Kremlin right now. Or a lunatic dictator in Tripoli. Nah, they've been set up. It's all propaganda. You, this is unfair. This is an unfair portrayal of conspiracy theorists in general it really is you know that people you see all the time on all the best conspiracy sites that this is actually discussed people do discuss these things the whole thing i mean it's we talk about hillary clinton organizing the whole takeover of libya it's you're crazy the same people 
who talk about these other things which you don't believe in also talk about that. Just because you don't believe in some of these things doesn't mean that we do not believe and do not address these things properly, because we do. And Rabbit finishes, that level of stupid must be exhausting. Well, that's just rhetoric, Rabbit. Okay. Steve Mumbling says on Unboxing Honesty, it's a YouTube link. What's this? Is this the one about um, Sidney Powell and Dominion again? Let's have a look. Yeah, probably, maybe, because you tend to repeat yourself with this. After months of pushing Donald Trump's oh, big it? lie, the election was rigged against him, weaving bizarre conspiracy theories appeared to... Oh, bizarre conspiracy theories. Yeah, this is MSNBC. Well, that's, that's a great way to introduce the news, isn't it? Bizarre conspiracy theories. That is rhetoric, not facts. To make that long-dead Venezuelan President Hugo Chavez had manipulated voting machines to change votes in the U.S., and ingratiating herself with Trump to the point where he reportedly considered naming her to be a special counsel overseeing an investigation of voter fraud. Lawyer Sidney Powell. Well, we see he, Trump actually dropped her from that list. She continued to work for Trump as a freelance, but um, she, she was originally going to be part of like Giuliani's team. Giving up the game in a court filing defending Powell from a billion dollar defamation lawsuit from Dominion Voting Systems. Her lawyer said the claims she made on national TV for months were not at all true and too ridiculous to be defamatory. Quote, plaintiffs themselves characterize the statements at issue as wild accusations and outlandish claims. They are repeatedly labeled inherently improbable and even impossible. Such characterizations of the allegedly defamatory statements further support defendants' position that reasonable people would not accept such statements as fact. That's right. After months of helping to whip up so much fury among the Trump base that Thousands of his supporters violently stormed the Capitol building and attempted to stop Joe Biden from being certified as president. Sidney Powell now says that all those people should have known better than to believe her. Election lawyer Mark Elias led the charge hmm. to stop Trump's efforts to claim... Oh, OK. Um, Steve, I'll have to watch this later all right, and get, get back to you on it because um, this is something I've not heard of before. Um, this is released 24th of March. It's quite recent, only a couple of weeks old. Um... I'm surprised. I mean, I don't know what to think right now. I really don't know what to think. And Charles Unley says, says, lol, it's like the lawyer to say, it's your fault for believing me. Um, I've never heard of this before, how someone uh, who'd launch, someone involved in a high-profile lawsuit like this would suddenly come out and say, oh, I'm only kidding, sorry. <laughs> Fooled you. Um, yeah, no. Um, I'll have to look into this in more detail, okay. But I appreciate the new uh, the information. I know probably you're going to take a different position on it than I do generally. But, uh, you know, facts are facts, as you said. If, uh, if, if the facts are there, the facts are there. I'll, I'll let you know. Ian R. Crane Memorial Livestream. Steve 71 says, I missed you live um, on Friday evenings at work time for me now, Ben. All right. No, I'll try and do it at different, maybe do it at a different time, Steve. Um, do you think that Ian could have been hit with his illness by nefarious means? As if he had to be silenced, gone but not forgotten. R.I.P. Ian. Thanks, Steve. I honestly, um, I've seen no ever, I've seen no reason to think that, and no one close to him believes that. Um, if there was a reason to think that might have happened, for example, with Philip Coppins, it's a bit more. It was a bit dodgy. I, I haven't seen that with Ian. Um, sorry, you missed the live stream. I'm actually going to be doing another live stream. I, I think I'm going to be needing to do another live stream pretty soon because these vaccine passports things, uh, the, the legislation is going through commons now i mean i don't know where that's going to go but obviously i'm going to have to comment on it charles unleashed says um in unboxing honest so this is a demonstration that ben kennedy think outside the box baboom tish never had a never a good idea to to box yourself in to just one idea baboom tish <laughs> yeah very droll charles very droll <laughs> what happened to sarah ever um oh, PC, Steve Mumbling, PC, he's hardly elite, is she? Well, um, he's a police constable, that's the like the lowest rank, but, you know, there's different levels within that PC level as well, and what's more, he is part of the, the police and a diplomat, the, 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 the parliamentary and diplomatic protection squad, which is, a, is an elite unit, it's part of the, uh, the special command, which means, yes, he is elite, he's firearms trained, his job is to protect some of the most important people in the country. Really, apart from the royal, the royal family have their own unit. They have the Royal Protection Command. His is kind of like the the other side of that. Uh, UFOs new video UFO disclosure 2021 on St Theo's Day question mark. 
Alex Ritchie says, yay. I think that's the first comment there. Well done. Well done, Alex, for getting the first comment in there. Um, we have now, oops. Uh, Diego Rivera to Genius, Israel Diego Rivera to Genius 2 says on UFO Disclosure Day, um, 2021 St. Theo's Day, we need the aliens to get rid of Boris Johnson. Ed Kaler says, hi. Diego Rivera says, hi to Ed. Um, Boris certainly needs to, certainly is in a position where we can't trust him anymore. Um, I think if he carries on like this, all hope is lost. I don't know whether he can turn away from the dark side, whether the SAS can rescue his family. I don't. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm hope. I'm still hopeful for him, but right now he's as good as he's as good as like. What's the difference between him and Keir Starmer right now? You know, it's just he's everything he was like. Everything that he used to be just a year ago is gone. I mean, he he, he went through the Brexit thing, but then along comes coronavirus and. His entire attitude just merges seamlessly with the mainstream. It's just pathetic. It really is. And con congratulating Joe Biden on his win and his victory. It's, what's the wrong with you, Boris? I can't believe Boris would, would, would Boris Johnson we knew before have done that. Anyway, same video, Alex Ritchie says, they didn't find us, they genetically created us. They've always been here. That's a possibility, Alex. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely. Chris Bird says, uh, this is the thread here. But which they do you mean? I think there are quite a few early humans, if you believe, and I think I agree, that we are genetic creation to worship and work for the gods. Is there one species that did that, or is there yet more of us to learn about the earthly beginnings? Also, I believe we are spiritual creatures, so where does that fit in? I know this is deep, but if you want answers, you need to be very open-minded and a very expansive mind too. Anything less and you aren't getting the complete answer. I love Ben's videos. He's an intelligent, discerning man with a talent for showing his deep knowledge and enthusiasm for the truth. Well, thanks very much, Chris. Thank you. Appreciate that. It's There are different species. Obviously, there were different lines of hominids and hominoids in the early days, you know, the Andathols and Homo erectus and Australopithecus and things like that. I mean, the way the human origins think, I haven't looked into in detail, but there is weird things about us, like our nose is different and our brain and our skin is like is different from the other apes and there's no like there's no missing link which charles darwin himself understood this that his theory was incomplete and it seems that the the connection between the two how one evolved to another is not discerned jock of ages says great way of putting it chris it's not easy as black and white true or false etc there's so much more nuance to every story in the whole ufo subject in general an open and expansive mind is essential you're right about this all the best old gaffer says underneath to that <coughs> They didn't do a very good job then, and I'm, I'm not digging for gold for the lazy lot. <laughs> well, you don't have to anymore, old gaffer. But they don't seem to want to do that anymore. That's like uh, the Zulus have that mythology. And also, oh, it's also in the um, Sitchin as well. Chris Bird says to old gaffer, Hi, that's the problem from them. We are harder to rule than we were. Yeah, we are. Say before the world wars. I know the coronavirus has proved the opposite. Well, the coronavirus is an active. The coronavirus, I think, seems to be like a, a double or quits maneuver on their part. I swear, it really is. But it's different to expecting mothers to send their children to war in order to have the same control. They're having to bring more and more laws of control out. And even then, the people are slowly waking up to what's going on here. Yeah. And Gold Gaffer says, OK, thank you, Chris. Yeah, I mean, it's it's if this is their sort of like. The last card and maybe it's not maybe they are going to have the fake inv alien invasion but i can't have a feeling that maybe the fake alien invasion has been replaced with the invasion of a, a virus it's what they possibly decided on i don't know it's a good it's an interesting question anyway malaya higher says fascinating yes i think you're onto something with the bigelow this is on the disclosure video and redford connections this should lead right to the sundance both the film fest and the ski resort. All oh, right. Um, <coughs> the the discovery. Yeah. Um, check out my interview with that um, about that. You know. Um, definitely. It's a it's an interesting thing. It's a really interesting thing. Okay, where are we now? Um, I just there's another comment here. I actually made a note of it because it vanished. Here we go. Um. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I was in the wrong place. 
Oh, yeah. HIV, this is from Free Radical. HIV did not begin as a biological weapon, warfare weapon, as HIV is not the cause of AIDS. AIDS is, in fact, an autoimmunity disorder syndrome that has many different casualties, and HIV is not one of them. Because untold amounts of people who have AIDS do not have HIV, AIDS is a name given to about 64 different illnesses, and these illnesses have been known about for 70 years. What has been killing many people with HIV are treatments like AZT, which is a cancer treatment that was taken off the shelf due to the amount of people it killed with cancer. But strangely, it can be still be used for someone with AIDS. Figure that one out. AIDS kills some people, but it depends on which type of sickness they have, such as TB or malnutrition. Or in the case of the gays, the amount of drugs in combination to antibiotics along with amyl nitrate. In their case, it's a lifestyle-caused illness. But the proper treatment of AIDS is very curable and not just to mainstream medical science. Like many other sicknesses, such as autism, heart disease, diabetes, and the big one, cancer, which isn't as big as it's been made out to be. It's just a huge cash cow. So many people day to day are dying needlessly because of ignorance. Carrie Mullins, Carrie Mullis, the man who created the RT-PCR test, and others like Peter Duisberg exposed the HIV and AIDS fraud when it came out about. Go to my channel, check it out. Well, thanks, Free Radical. I actually put on a statement. I put on a, I actually put on a, um, a reply in text. Hi, Free Radical. I read Christian Maggiore's book, What If Everything You Thought You Knew About AIDS Was Wrong? the book that will change your view of HIV and AIDS, and possibly change your life. That's a long title, I know. It is similar to what you state in your gut, gut, in your comment, but I seriously consider her ideas. But since watching Dr. Len Horowitz in Lies We Trust, Hollywood, the CIA, and Bioterrorism, another long title, I changed my mind. That's it. Yeah, I think there is a virus. I mean, maybe some of what was said about that, I mean, in terms of the, the AIDS industry, as, as Duisberg calls it. Let me just find your channel here, Free Radical, because... I'm sorry your comment got missing because um, I don't know what happened to your comment actually uh, because I I, Call your I actually did I actually copied it from the email notification because I um, where's your channel and filters channel free radical there we go well, there's loads of free radical channels I don't know which ones your your yours are sorry um. I'll tell you what, I'll, uh, let me just filter, um, let me just do this, hang on, Peter Juiceberg, I mean, it's, where's that video with Peter Juiceberg, Juiceberg, here we go, it, it's possible that YouTube banned it, oh, Carrie Mullins, no, they have, they, if Carrie Mullins hasn't been banned, then Juiceberg won't be, this is Fireside Shut with Dr. Carrie Mullins. Yeah, where did AIDS come from? There's a there's a book called The House of N there's a film called The House of Numbers, which is oh this is from South Africa. A meeting to discuss HIV cause does HIV cause AIDS debate. Right, um, is House of Numbers still on YouTube? I thought it'd been banned. I know what's his name Miles Power did a debunking of it. No, there's a whole channel of it here. Right, good. Right. It's quite old, a few years ago, but um, it's interesting to watch. Now, again, I don't think it's completely true. I think there's much more to it. I mean, Len Horowitz, his video about In Lies We Trust, takes a different idea of the AIDS story, that the virus, AIDS virus is real and the AIDS virus is deadly, but that maybe some of it, maybe some, some of what happens to people with AIDS, especially in Africa, is part of what you're talking about there. So thanks for that, though, Free Radical. Much appreciated. Which video was that on? I don't even know what video it was on. Sorry. Um, here we go. Um, Chris Bird says, For anyone who has shown any interest, it appears our skies are full of craft that are in our skies that aren't craft the public are aware of. Yep, yeah, UFOs, UAPs. And that suggests secret engineering innovations. But I would ask students of the UFO to consider much deeper questions such as parallel universes, human disclosure, extraterrestrial knowledge. I would love to hear people's thoughts on this and also where their thoughts are on the virus that has blighted our lives. I feel very deeply that the virus was man-made and killed some poor souls, but I don't believe the impact should close us down and distract from the normal herd immunity, which we have used for thousands of years. Anyway, I hope you continue to think and use your own minds. God bless you, Ben. Oh, thank you, Chris. God bless you, too. Um, as far as the UFOs go, you've, you, you insert quite a few subjects into that quite short comment. 
Um, there's only about six sentences or so in there, but you insert a lot. Um, <coughs> I'm, I'm open to all ideas about UFOs. I don't believe that um, secret engineering explains the, the UFO phenomenon, especially the most recent interesting elements from the 2017 revelations from TTSA and ATIP. But obviously that's maybe that it does explain some cases, so does other things. Interdimensional stuff is probably a part of it, yeah. Um, as for the virus, well, the virus obviously came from the laboratory in Wuhan. I mean, it's just ridiculous to suggest that, oh, that there was this market full of, like, baby mice and stuff like that. It came from there, yeah. It's, it sounds like a terrible excuse. It's like a, it's almost like a, like a puppy sitting next to a pile of poo and saying, oh, it, it just dropped out the sky, honest. Yeah, um, I, you know, I've done several videos about the coronavirus I recommend. I'm going to be doing another one soon because I've got a feeling, I feel I'm going to have to do a live stream or something about the vaccine passports. It's absurdity. <coughs> Steve Mumbling says on UFO Disclosure 2021, St. Theo's Day, if Elizondo quit the Pentagon to be a civilian ufologist, it tells, oh, oh bloody, oh, once again, I've got to get there, let me get the old, um, let me get the old, uh, there we go. Let's go back to the tag, which, once again, I've got to remember what's on my clipboard. The fifth hour, blimey. It's now about, it's 20 past seven in the evening now. Um, if Elizondo quit the Pentagon to be a civilian ufologist, it tells us the government knows nothing about UFOs, doesn't it? <clears throat> no, it tells us that um, he maybe didn't want to work under those conditions that he was set by his employment within the Department of Defence. If they are aware of all sorts of exciting UFO-related information and had tangible evidence of UFOs being alien spacecraft, he would have stayed where he was at the Pentagon. This tells us nothing exciting will be revealed in June because there's nothing exciting to reveal. Well, Steve, let's wait till June, shall we? But as for Elizondo, your, your um, supposition about his motives don't make sense. Why would he stay at the Pentagon? He would only stay at the Pentagon if, yeah, he would maybe want access to more information he would have at the Pentagon. If he stayed in there, he may be, he may be um, cleared for other subjects, but he wanted to talk about it. He wanted to talk about it openly outside his world. And you know for a fact, that from his interviews on Tucker Carlson, that his wings were very much clipped by his employment. He decided to quit, basically, and go full-time in ufology with TTSA, because it allows him to be more to, to to do more things. He probably wouldn't be able to present that TV show unidentified if he'd been at the Pentagon. You see what I mean? As a civilian ufologist, he can't. Of course, he can't break his superiors. He can't just tell everyone everything he knew, which is classified. He can't do that. But he, he is more free than he would have been if he'd stayed there. Charles Unleash said, "Elizondo gave us a gave us a foil party balloon that had already been identified in 2004." Oh yeah. Um, that's the Batman thing, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> he, did he present... Well, that's, well, he gave us a photograph which clearly was explained, yeah. That didn't mean he gave us a photo knowing that it was a party balloon, Charles. A piece of industrial waste from a slag heap in Mexico. Really? With an isotopic ratio that can be found nowhere on Earth? Check out Dr. Irina Scott's book on that as well. A promised real starship for investors that never caught past the concept of drawing. What more do you want? Now, nah, that starship thing, yeah... You've got a you've got an interesting point there. What happened to that? Where did it go? What well, you know? What have TTSA done with that money? Yeah, that's that's an that's actually a fair question. And um, the Starship thing, hmm, they went quiet about that, didn't they? Dodgy. You know, maybe that's one of the reasons that. Well, Elizondo says he quit. <laughs> Sorry, he quit the Pentagon because well, he quit TTSA because. He said they're more media orientated than science orientated, and he wants to be science orientated. Steve Mumbling says on the same video, there is no tangible evidence of the Earth being visited by ETs. Not one ET species, let alone many. This is science fiction wishful thinking on Ben's part, and if there were hostile ETs here, no one, including the SAS, would stand a chance of dealing with them. It's ludicrous and clearly shows Ben's complete lack of understanding of the whole U.S. versus E.T. scenario. Oh, says the bloke who knows everything about E.T.s because he's such an enthusiast, Steve. Oh, you used to know Peter Paget, didn't you? Oh, really? 
You, you don't, you've not said any more about that, have you? Firstly, yes, there is tangible evidence of the Earth being visited by ETs, and many, which is contrary to what you say. Science fictional, fiction wishful thinking is rhetoric, and it makes an assumption about what I said. I could, as I said in my sceptic videos, Steve, I could equally accuse you of wishful thinking in the same way. If the ETs were hostile... Well, you see, again, with its assumptions, I mean, some are, it appears, but whether special forces will stand a chance in dealing with them, it depends. I mean, again, we can we assume they're much more powerful and high-tech than we are. And indeed, there are occasions, mostly in terms of aviation, fight, you know, fighter jets and things like that, of combat between human forces and ETs. And in, in, those, in those reports... Almost every single one end with the ET coming better off. The humans lose. But that doesn't mean that they may not have some way of dealing with them. Possibly possibly the non-lethal element I think is very important. The fact that they use this sticky, this sticky string is the only way they can kind of... The only thing they dare use against them could be for that very reason. Because they don't want a full alien retaliation by shooting them. Hmm. Um, Steve Mumling says, Simon pa Simon's parts... Did they give you a box of crayons like the one they gave... Oh, Simon's parts is someone I can't see. Smouldering Simon's parts. All right. Someone I can't see. Did they give you a box of crayons like the one they gave Parks? They did... Parks didn't... Bu Parks bought a box of crayons. Remember, he went into the art shop in that s stupid TV show he should never have had, any he should never have had, any had anything to do with. If I, I, I advised Miles not to go on it, and I, if, I, if, I, if I'd been in touch with Simon at the time, I'd have advised him not to do it either. I was asked to be on that programme. I said, bugger off, basically. He goes into an art shop. He buys the crayons for his artwork. What's wrong with crayons? Crayons aren't just something kids use, Steve. I, Simon's pictures are very interesting, I think. Charles Unleashed says, If anyone was going to disclose anything, it would be Ed Snowden. But he went looking and found absolutely nothing. It's not like Snowden has anything left to lose. So he has no reason to keep quiet about it. Well, Charles, I just... I explained that in the actual video, that Snowden, I think Snowden has an awful lot to lose. It's possible that his political asylum in Russia is dependent on certain circumstances, that possibly he has some leverage in the game. And he's not just living there by the, 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 the willfulness of their generosity. Um, Assange is a different matter. Assange, I think Assange really has hit rock bottom now, hasn't he? And I hope he presses that button. I really do. Hmm. Same video. Uh, um, here we go. Steve Bumbling. Elizondo, we insist on calling Alizondo. Alizondo wouldn't say the debris came from a Chinese aircraft or Russian sub, because if he did, everyone would lose interest. Well, he'd be more. It'd be, it'd be true, though, wouldn't he? Especially considering these things are being put up for scientific analysis. And he wouldn't make any more money out of it. Well, he had a salary at the DOD. After. He, he, he was uh, a long... I mean, how old is he? He must be 50-something. He's been in the uh, US government service. He, he, was in, he was in the army originally. He, he was in the intelligence corps. Then he became part of the, um, the civilian staff at the Pentagon, the officials at the DOD. I mean, surely he has a nice... He must have a nice pension waiting for him, and he must have a nice salary. I mean... Surely, I mean, quitting early like he did will affect his pension. I mean, how much money does he need? I mean, if he needed money, why didn't he stay in? Why doesn't he sell dodgy double glazing? Why doesn't he do anything? Some more dragon juice is required, I think. As we're now, oh, now we're over there. We're more than three quarters of the way through, but I didn't. I thought it should be shorter. I really did. I think I'm going to have to do it three weeks. You know. Or maybe every four uploads or something, because of course it depends on the number of uploads, not just the number of time, the time between each video. It's the number of uploads, the number of comments, things like that, which would affect how long the actual comments reply video is. <coughs> um, that's why he can't say, he can't say to maintain some intrigue. It certainly doesn't confirm they had ET material. Uh, it doesn't, actually, it doesn't, you see, this is an interesting thing. They're skirting around the issue of origins very, very tightly indeed. But it's it's almost, again, it's it's kind of a, it's kind of a deception by omission. It's almost like they are kind of, a, it's almost a confession by omission, rather. 
because people are going to ask, look, where, are, where are these things from? Where did you get this nitinol stuff? Where did you make it? Where's, where's the scientists who developed it? Where's the metallurgists and the chemists who developed it? And they go, hmm. Like that. It's almost that sort of thing. If there was something to the UFOs being E.T., Bigelow would still be investigating the subject, and he wouldn't have moved on to ghosts. He found nothing E.T. related, got bored waiting for something to E.T. to turn up and moved on. What? Really? How come? How come he made the entire team redundant with non-disclosure agreements? How come Dr. Irina Scott has, has, been, has been writing what she did in her book about it? That doesn't quite that, that doesn't quite fit with your little assumption about um, what was going on inside Bigelow's head. I mean, it's interesting that he's gone on to psychical research. I'm actually going to take, follow his work on that considerably. But mm. Charles Unleashed said, "That's pretty much all Elizondo says these days. I know things, but I can't tell. He should be called Mister Mister Watch This Space." Well, Charles, he also says things like we're going into second gear. He he keeps saying things which indicates there is more coming. And, OK, he says, watch this space. But do you remember, what was it we were all saying in 2017? Oh, soon we'll, we'll find out, I tell you. These are real US Navy videos. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Just keep waiting, keep waiting. It'll be confirmed that these are real US Navy videos. And everyone's going, no, they're just someone mock, some idiot in their basement mock that up. <clears throat> you know, people are saying this. David Fravor just made it. Yeah. And then, of course... We watched the space, and eventually in the space appeared, yes, the, t the A tip exists, yes, Elizondo was in it, and yes, that's a real US Navy footage, you see. So sometimes watching this space is the right thing to do. You never know whether it's a waste of time. And actually, Steve Mumbling says to Charles Unleashed underneath, oh, sorry, I was, addressing Char I, sh I was addressing Charles before, more like Mr. Fuck Off and Stop Wasting Everyone's Time. You see, um, the thing is, you don't know whether it's a waste of time or not until you are either your your anticipation is either vindicated or um, or proved wrong or, or rebutted. Um, anyway, show them what here we go. Here's another thread. Oh, this is a long one, and it starts with Charles. Donor really needs to lay off the sauce when he makes a video. He gets way too political when he's soused. What, what was he? He wasn't drinking. He was only drinking this. He was drinking. He told us what he was drinking. What was it? It wasn't alcoholic, I don't think. <laughs> the Black Vault just wasted an hour saying bugger all is going to happen on June the 1st. Well, Charles, I mean, um, that was... Did I watch... The, what's the latest Black Vault stuff? I, got to, I haven't watched that bloody video yet. Oh, God. Well, thanks for the spoilers, mate, but I'll, I'll watch it and find out for myself. Um... But there is a de there was this debate oh god this debate I've got to see about people anticipating June the first yeah. Jock of Aliens, Jock of Ages says lol Dolan ain't drunk trust me. I've been and still am around people who are alcoholic functioning and non. Richard shows no signs whatsoever of being a heavy drinker. He may smoke weed though a lot of people do these days. Richard Dolan actually likes uh, I think he likes wine I remember because I have actually been to the pub with Richard Dolan, and um, he likes wine. I must admit, though, um, he was a—he got him. He, he was a bit great in actually. He, um, I, won't, I won't go into details now, but I did fantasise him about slapping him in the face at one point. Um, Charles only said to jog. I think it got to him that most of his audience were showing up to hit on his wife. Poor fella. <laughs> Tracy Garbutt is is a tra an attractive lady, yes, and she's brilliant. I mean, she talks about remote viewing. And it's fascinating, you know. Regardless, I, I don't. Whatever she looked like, I'd still be interested to hear what she had to say on that regard. But they don't show up for her. I mean, they those two do separate. Like, I mean, sure, sometimes they do joint events, but sometimes they do separate events too. Tracy Garbutt's got her own presentation circuit and things like that. Jock of Ages says to Charles, "Maybe it's because he lost a parent about nine months ago. Did he? Oh, poor fella." Maybe that's why he's a bit down in the dumps at the moment and sort of gravitating towards the, the very uh, dark and pessimistic positions. Ch Charles says to Jock, Richard has had problems for years. All oh, right, you, um, Jock, of course, you know, you, you seem to have, Charles Unleashed, you seem to have the, uh, 
you seem to have a seat at the table of all these people on the inside, you know. You know about David Icke, you know what he really thinks. And now, and now Richard Dolan as well. Do carry on. You could be like the best gossip monker since the hospital porters. Um, he, Charles carries on. You'll probably remember when he was interviewed by a journalist at, science, at that science convention some time ago. And he launched into a drunken rant about the deep state, accusing her of being part of it, which wasn't what she asked him. I've not seen that, Sir Charles. Um, could you get us a link? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll Google it later. She was left visibly shocked. Prior to that, he went on a defensive rant on a radio show and asked about the infamous Roswell slice hoax, which he heavily promoted. <clears throat> Again, he was completely schnockered. Sch schnockered, that's a good word, schnockered. Richard's personality completely changed when a certain person latched onto him while he was still married to Karen, and he went full-age woo-woo. All right, it's all coming. This is a real EastEnders stuff here. Firstly, um... Richard Dolan can be, I'd say this much, socially he's, he's not someone I like to socialise with. He can, he can be abrasive. And like I said, he, um, did, when I did go to the pub with him, the, the first time at the Exit Politics 2011, I did get upset by his attitude. I, you see, I was actually like, a, I wasn't in a position where I could really say anything because I had, I had a, an official capacity at that conference. I was part of the press team. I couldn't. Really, I had a press pass for that conference. I couldn't really, but I wanted to. I wanted to. He was talking down to me. He was doing it in front of my girlfriend. And I. I wanted to. I wanted to slap him. I wanted to slap him on the fucking nose. Basically, I felt like it. And he. It felt like he was doing it deliberately too. I, he, he was. He wasn't drinking heavily. It was. I tell you who was drinking heavily that night. Nick Pope. Oh God! You should have seen him. You should have seen him. Uh, Miles Johnson will remember this because he was there too. A um, couple of other people who were the part of the Exit Politics team, um, Anthony Beckett and that. But I think he was there that night. But um, Nick Pope was knocking back the, the pints, and he was like, he was sort of leaned over at me like that, and his face in my in my face like that, and it was like really scary because there was green light coming in from the outside because it was like a kebab emporium next door, and it had like uh, neon strips on it, neon a neon sign which was green in it. And it was shining on his face, and he had this green face. And he said, Be do you know where I've been today, Ben? He was drunk as anything. Do you know where I've been today, Ben? I've been to the BBC. I went to BBC Manchester. And they're going to produce a TV show. That's what they're going to do, Ben. And I'm going to be hosting it. I'm going to be part of a panel. It's going to be like, it's going to be like the X Factor, except we have to decide who the real alien abductees are. And I said, that's very nice, Nick. That's very nice. Fascinating stuff. <laughs> All right, I'm going off, I'm going off topic. Sorry, I'm, go I'm going down memory lane here. Um, the defensive round, yeah. The Roswell slide thing, Charles, I've done... You must have seen my videos about that. What a bloody palaver. What a bloody embarrassing palaver that was. Although, funnily enough, I mean, I, I think I covered this in a more recent video. The, the case is not entirely closed. I mean, there are... You see, there were there were people coming out, talk, experts talking about the nature of that mummy and about the some of the physiognomy, some of the anatomy of that mummy that wasn't quite right. The problem was that the people behind the Roswell slide hoax were like mixing up the two statements. It's like the the card with the writing on. They were saying we can't read it, we can't read it, we can't deblur it. And it turns out that the organisers were sending the deblurring people the the other card which was much more indistinct whereas the card which was more distinct was the one which you eventually it was actually unblurred it was revealed what the mummy was they even found a more recent photo of it from the 90s at the million dollar museum and um so yeah it was we did he you say he heavily promoted it i don't think heavily promoted is the right word he along with another people took part in it um, and as for the certain person you're talking about, when he was still married to Karen, I mean, that's very, this is all very EastEnders. Um, I don't know exactly what you're talking about there, going into full New Age woo-woo. He doesn't seem to be a full New Age woo-woo person. Um, he's just a person, he's a person I admire very enormous, and I very much respect, for, I very much respect him professionally. I like his books, I like his YouTube channel, I think he's a valuable asset to the movement. As an individual person to, to socialise with, I wouldn't choose him. I wouldn't want to go to the pub with him. I, I, I didn't like sitting around where he just talks about himself the whole time. He has to be the centre of the conversation. And he's, he has a demeaning attitude to people. Um, I, so there you are. 
Jock of Ages says to Charles, problems for years. What kind of problems? He never said anything. Do you t Again, quite good question, Jock. Do you talk to him? I must have missed the science convention. You've got a link. I'm thinking of the person who this person could be. Are you talking about one of the Gaia people? I've had no time for anyone who promotes Corey Good or Jaime Massan. Uh, Corey Good, with the, oh, the blue chicken guy, um, and along with David Wilcock. Um, they are question. I mean, I don't know what the, where they're coming from, quite frankly, whether they mean what they're saying or whether it is just some kind of scam. I mean, they, it's a lot of what they say is nonsense. Not every word. I mean, I don't ignore... I think Corey and Good and David Wilcock are worth listening to, but just put everything they say on the back burner until it can be verified. That's what I'm saying. But Jaime Masson, you cannot... I don't think you can possibly question his sincerity and his his straightforwardness. He is, he is a true... He's a true aficionado. He's a true enthusiast. He gets some things wrong as a result of that because he's not discerning enough. But, I mean, he's a very... I think he's a very admirable individual. Um, you know, Darcy Weir, I've interviewed him. He's made documentaries with Jaime and he attests to Jaime being a, a decent guy. Charles Unleash says, My personal contact with Dolan was limited back in the day, but I learned one thing you never do is question him to his face because he blows his stack and can be really intimidating. In this respect, he's very much like David Icke. All right. Um, you're Charles, honestly. I'm, I'm glad you're here giving this this stuff because this is exclusive kind of... This is exclusive kind of hello material here we're talking about here, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, this is like woman's own for conspiracy theorists. Be, you know, based on what you said about him, I can well believe it, you know. Um... The fact that he blows is he's, he's unstable you know he's unstable he in a sense his attitude is unstable and intimidating yeah intimidating yes very much so as for being like david Icke, i haven't hung around david Icke as much as i have dolan so i never know <clears throat> dolan was never a historian he was a librarian contrary to his claims really well he studied he, he he'd graduated from oxford what in library in library studies really come off it come on Really? He's not a historian. He's not a researcher either. He's a compiler of stories, again, contrary to his claims. No, he's an excellent researcher, Charles. Excellent. I mean, do read his books, The UFOs and the National Security State. I've only ever read the second one. The first one's not available over here, but, oh, man. Um, you can't, I mean, I've not read his other books, AD After Disclosure, an absolute classic. I think that's unfair. My opinion, of it, uh, my opinion now, and it is an opinion, is that he concluded years ago there is very little evidence, but he wants to use the platform as a business. The person definitely isn't from Gaia, but I'm sure you will figure it out. If you can find one of Karen Dolan's interviews, maybe on the, Eric, on the Erica Luke's channel, you'll get what I'm talking about, because there's a whole other side to things he isn't telling people about. Okay. Well, as you said, it's just an opinion. It's your assessment of him, Charles, your personal assessment... I can't comment on that. You alone are qualified thereof. But as for um, Erica Luke's channel, I'm at, I think I subbed to it. Let me just find this. Oh, it's... Uh, we're getting into the internet blood sports now, guys. We really are. Here we go, Erica Luke's. Yes, she's very interesting. Oh, oh, I'm I Erica Luke's, host oh, I, of... I haven't subbed to her. Right, I'll sub to her now. Because I've watched loads of her videos, I didn't realise I hadn't subbed to her. All right, I'll check out the video later. I will, but she's bloody brilliant. Um, she's hopefully speaking uh, with UFO Truth at some point. Um, yeah, um, fair enough. I'll check that out, Charles, but thanks for the information. Jock of Ages says, you don't know the guy, do you? Have you ever met him? And Charles says, yes, I have. Got signed books to prove it. Oh, cool. Oh, he signed my copy of AD. Oh, it's, it's Edward Bryce. It's my stable. It's great. He's very good. He's good like that, I must say. Professionally, he's great, yeah. It's just like you get him around a table in a pub, and I, I, I didn't feel comfortable being at a table in a pub. To be honest, like, the time he was, like, talking down to me in front of my girlfriend, Sue, Sue Astain, at the time, that, um, as I said, was the worst bit. But even a few, another... I, I met him again at another conference later on, and we went to a restaurant, and he was, again, he was, like, holding court. Everyone was... He had to be the centre of attention. He wasn't. He wasn't. He didn't ask people other things. He'd, he's one of these people who just talks about himself and expects everyone else to talk about him. And I didn't. I, she's not someone who's fun to socialise with. So, some of what you said about Dolan and his personality, I have to concur with based on my 
own experience of him. As I said, that doesn't affect the way I feel about him professionally. I never claimed to know him either. I've spoken to him on occasion. My question to him was, why does he reject Mac Brazel's actual statement regarding the Roswell debris? Why does he accept Greer's account of the alleged briefing by James Wolsey, but rejects Wolsey's own signed affidavit saying it never happened? Does he regret promoting the Roswell slides? And didn't he know it was a hoax? Uh, Wolsey, the thing about Wolsey, Kit Green, I think when you... The reason he does that with Greer and Wolsey is because of the Kit Green material. I think that's what that's all about. Um, as for the Roswell slides, promoting... I mean, is promoting the right word? I think he probably regrets getting... In, he, he must regret getting involved in it because I think everyone does. I think even Jaime must realise now that it was a terrible... It was a terrible debacle. And the, the sad irony is that it... They actually uncovered a genuine mystery to do with a, a mummy that appears not to be complete human. That's that's the sad thing is, a real they had there was a real there was a real enigma to do with that mummy, and it was and it was lost. It was lost in the noise of the fact that it wasn't Hilda Blair Ray's photo. I mean, it's it's it wasn't it was Hilda Blair Ray's photo from a museum, not the Roswell incident. That's that was the sad thing that the the truth the real the real research that could have been done was buried in a load of crap. I mean, I made a video about that, um, and several articles on the Panmo Voice as well. But does he promote it? I don't think he promoted. I think promoting is the wrong word. Rather than offer a sensible response, which I would have been open to, he became angry and started going on about his credentials, which aren't true either. All right, well, I don't, I, what you said about his credentials doesn't make sense, the fact he graduated from Oxford. Um, he was actually shortlisted for a Rhodes Scholarship, you know. But being angry, getting angry easily, yes, that's Richard Dolan, all right. Getting angry and getting, getting um, becoming sort of like aggressive, yes, that's him, definitely. To claim you are a trained historian when you're actually a librarian, again, um, is that true? Is absurd and highly misleading. It's like claiming to be the, the pilot when you're just the cabin crew. Um, more, well, that's worse than that. I'm a librarian. It's just someone who looks after books. A historian, though, is someone who would. I don't think you. I don't think you could get a scholarship at Oxford, and graduate there if you're just a librarian, Charles. It's all coming out tonight, ladies and gentlemen. This is UFO <laughs> Internet Blood Sports Central. It really is, man. This is infighting supreme. This is this is drama day on Hapanwo TV. Thanks to Charles Unleashed. <laughs> Jock of Ages says, So you know you know all this about him from a book signing. You you're sad as fuck. Stop editing comments, mid. Well, what he look, Jock, you funny enough, Jock just edited that comment. <laughs> he can edit comments if he wants, Jock. Um, and um, Charles says underneath, that isn't what I said either. I gave my reasons in detail. If you don't like what I'm saying, then don't ask me the question, dumb nuts. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, it's a show more replies here. But when I click on it, nothing happens. So obviously, this is, these are the weird people who I can't see. They're just not visible for some reason. Okay. Come on, up you go. Whoops. Where are we now? Okay. But that was a very interesting little revelation there. And funnily enough, it does... I'm, I'm inclined to believe some of what Charles was saying based on my own experience of spending time with Dolan. I, only for a couple of days. I didn't know him well, but I spent a few days with him over the years. I've spent... On two, two or three occasions, I've spent time with him. The Unwanted Ginger Lego on UFO Disclosure 2021. Oh, my goodness me. This is a YouTube link from the Unwanted Ginger Lego. What a name. What sort of name is that? Uh, about 12 years ago, I was finishing the work on Disney's oh. Tarzan. Oh, it's, oh, God, it's Professor Brian Cox. Oh, God. Oh, it's Brian Blessed. Oh, I like him. He's cool. He, he's great as the king in Blackadder. Edgar, come here. Oh, he's, he, honestly, that Blackadder, he's brilliant as the king. The first Blackadder. On surviving a plane crash, there's Professor Brian Cox sitting there in a Greer, in a, in a sexualized kind of Greer position. Oh, God. And he's got... The, who's that next to him? There's this woman sitting to the left. I don't know who she is. Um, this is uh, Space Time and Videotape, BBC Four. All right. Oh, good. I think I'll watch that when I've got the stomach for it because I adore Professor Brian Cox. Yes, I do. 
But thanks for that unwanted ginger Lego. Much appreciated. I'll have a. I'll, I'll watch it just because it's Brian Blessed because I like him. Uh, St. Theo's Day disclosure. Who's this? Um, Steve O seventy one says. So when the MOD put out all their files on UFOs and said they're no longer investigating them, did they mean they're now interested in looking into UAPs or whatever the new name they've attached to them? <coughs> no. Well, I, don't, I think it was slightly less subtle than that, Steve. They just basically literally lied and said, they said, hey, it's again, it's a, it's a lie by deception, by um, a lie by structure, as Sticks, Hex and Hammer would call it. They basically said... Um, the ATIP is shutting down. We, they said they didn't say they're not investigating UFOs anymore. They said ATIP shut down in 2012, with with the obviously without adding the qualifier, which would alleviate. They said people they're hoping people will misunderstand. They're deliberately putting it in a position where mis presenting it in a way that people will misunderstand it, because then they're hoping will people will just say, well, obviously um, if ATIP finished in 2012, that was the end of the UFO project without announcing no they just they just sort of rebranded it and moved it to another department it's it's very crafty jock of ages said good point i wouldn't be surprised if they did just change the acronym or name that's exactly what they did they did jock yeah they just uaptf which is now no longer a black budget organization amazingly Roll on June. That's why I, I hope. If it's could it be June the first? Oh God! As I just said I, I don't really want it to be because I want St. Theo's Day to be special. But you know, I, I don't care if it really is. I won't. I'll, I'll live with that. Steve O seventy one said yes. It makes them technically correct when foreboding any FOIA requests. Good point, Steve. Yeah, it's uh, it's taking advantage of the the loopholes in the laws. Um, I'm sure uh, John Greenwald would appreciate that. Okay, we have another show more replies. Thing here. Oh, it's a long thread here. Well, Charles Scott just comes back. Right, no wonder. <coughs> this is Theo's disclosure again. Um, Steve Mumbling said, "Oh, this is right. You use Charles Scott's mathematical analysis in a magazine. That's hilarious. Did you understand it? Did you get someone competent to verify it?" Have you seen many of Charles Scott's vacuous ramblings? I strongly suspect it was absolute rubbish. I honestly don't believe you have the remotest chance of debunking Mick West. Spruiking a lot of science fiction drivel isn't debunking. Forget all the someone said nonsense and show us some real evidence. OK, yes, I did use Charles Scott's mathematical analysis. Um, did I Did I need to understand every bit of it? No, what I didn't... The thing about it, you says, you say here, I have... It, we don't have the... I have looked at Charles's material, especially on Roswell, I find it interesting. I'm less drawn towards his Adamski stuff, but the, the stuff on Roswell is very interesting. As for Mick West, I do, why do you believe I don't have the remotest chance of debunking him when essentially he's been debunked by one of his own allies? Philip, Phil Mason. Philip Mason has debunked him when trying to support his thesis. As I explained before, he came out with some completely different figures from the same methodology. What does that say about Mick West's original methodology? Not least his stupid Clowns Day Off fallacy. You know, oh, well, he must have sent some reflection on the on the canopy. Oh, please do read the article, Steve. Feel free to comment on it in your on your own channel. <coughs> Charles Unleash says, I would never say that alien visitation is impossible, but it's massively improbable for many good reasons. Being in physical contact with actual aliens would expose both species to deadly pathogens, viruses, bacteria that humans would have no immune defense against, and which they would bring back with them. Yeah, and vice versa. The other issue is that almost all these creatures, reptilians, greys, etc., were initially invented in 1809 by Washington Irving for the world's first alien invasion story. The men of the moon, Irving's men, moon men, were described as tiny grey men with heads shaped like hot air balloons, and little green lizard men who could attach their heads and breathe poison gas, which is where the term little green men originated, unless useless fun fact, the term flying saucer was used as a reference to a clay pigeon shooting. Right, and that's interesting, Charles, because, <coughs> well, it does push back the so-supposed media meme invention of the greys slightly earlier than the previous one, which was 1977, which was, um, what's his name? Skeptoid. The guy was the guy was put in jail. Um, this, it'll come to me in a minute. But basically, one of the skeptics said um, that no one, no one, no one had heard of Greys until seventy-seven because that's when they appeared in Close Encounters. 
well, Robbie Gray managed to get hold of the production designer of that film, and the production designer explained, you know, I got I got the idea from talking to contactees and abductees. But I've not heard of this particular um, story. This 1809, that's a very old one. Um, it still it still doesn't quite explain why some of these images appear in far older publications, not least cave paintings that are thousands of years old. Um, and they appear in artwork such as some of the stuff that Alistair Crowley came out with. No, actually, Alistair Crowley came after 1809. He's not that old. You know, he was born. Uh, I think it was 18. It was 1860 or 70. I think he was born. Um, <coughs> but um, I'll have to look into this story. That sounds interesting. I mean, I think I've seen a film. But I think the Men in the Moon, I think I've seen the film about that. Um, as for the flying saucer thing, that was Kenneth Arnold. It was actually a misinterpretation of something Kenneth Arnold said. But I didn't know that was what they call clay pigeons, the the, um, the actual discs that are fired in clay pigeon shooting. The Little Green Men actually originates from, in 1914, it comes from a, um, a... Funny enough, it was a witness that was only rediscovered in 2008 by Richard D. Hall. His name's Robert Hall. And um, he actually had an encounter which led to basically a, a Roswell-type event in Gateshead, Northumberland. So, yeah, um, that's where the term Little Green Men actually originated from. Oh, and blimey, five hours. Five hours long and we're not finished yet. <laughs> but we will be. I'm going to keep going. Right, guys, it's hour number six here. Well, that's an interesting little post from Charles there. And Charles says here, oh, and Steve, it's funny how I made up a gibberish mathematical equation that he agreed with a few videos back. Was that Charles? That's Charles Scott, yeah. He was pretending that he understood what I was talking about, but I made it up to see if he knew what he was talking about. He didn't. At that point, I thought he was just goofing around, but his comments, that made me blow up on your channel, made me think otherwise. All oh, right, well, um, that's Charles. I think that's a kind of Carlos manoeuvre you were pulling there. Yeah. Steve Mumbling says... To Charles Unleashed. Charles Scott is going to jump in in a minute. It should be entertaining. As I said, I think Charles Scott has a few bats in the belfry. The repetitive rambling suggests mental health issues. So does his complete inability to tell fact from fiction. So in other words, what you say about me? Alien visitation is extremely unlikely because there'll be nothing in it for them. It's very hard to do interstellar travel outside of science fiction. Steve, that's an, that you're anthropomorphizing. That is a complete assumption on your part. You don't know. No one knows exactly why aliens would do this, that, or the other. Jock of Ages says, which video? I want to see it. Ch Charles Unleashed. Reply to comments 38. Scott was giving his mathematical equations for the Adamski film, so I responded with some gibberish I just made up, which he pretended to understand. I wanted to see if he actually knows what he's talking about, which he doesn't. He later went on to the mumbling channel to make all kinds of accusations against myself and the people I know who suffered actual loss on the 9-11 attacks. Absolutely deplorable. I've not seen these comments myself. I have to check Steve's channel. Um, Charles says to Unleash says to Steve, I have to agree, Steve. Scott is the only person I've ever blocked. Charles Scott says under here, <coughs> to Charles Unleashed, as you are the crackpot, as you have demonstrated, you don't understand mathematics. It does not surprise me. Uh, so Charles has unblocked you now, Charles Unleashed. Charles Scott has unblocked you. Can I call you Scott and Unleashed just for this particular, just for convenience during this discussion? So Scott has unblocked Unleashed. You are a crackpot. Okay. It does not surprise me to say that even if someone hadn't studied maths, many people can tell your following comment is dross. Quote, both are wrong for the same reasons. If you look in the light on F, FLIR, and the kinetic energy, the symbol K, the kinetic energy by this force acting on a particle, a constant force acting on a particle speed, the above equation in K equals half of mv2, v squared, minus half of mv squared. We call one half of the product of the change is the produce of constant force acting on a particle at, of its speed at T equals half mv squared. We call one half the common direction of G, gimbal, and A. What is the x axis caused in the displacement x? We have for constant acceleration of F a wholly inconsistent conclusion giving credence to Mick West as the superior analysis. Unquote. I don't, is, I don't know if that's Charles's um, Carlos maneuver or whether that's a real formula. Charles says, sorry, Scott says, 
I asked you if Mick, the Mick West video you spoke of was really relevant to disproving my conclusion about Fleer, Gimbel and Adamski film and GoFast, and we never answered the question. Scott then says, To Unleashed, as you were a crackpot, it doesn't surprise me to say I've never, ever done a mathematical qu equation for the Adamski film. You incorrectly assume I pretended to understand your gibberish maths, when in fact I asked you for the rele relevance of Mick West's video. I'm not going to pursue this conversation, waste my time, drivel fiction, narrative, etc. Scott says to Steve Mumbling, I've achieved a higher grade possible in A-level mathematics. You're a crackpot who's demonstrating you don't understand Roswell, blah de blah Oh, yeah, you've said all that before, drivel fiction, narrative. Steve Mumbling says to, to Unleashed, I never saw that. I thought he was going to debunk Mick West's mathematical analysis for Go Fast UFO and tell us all precisely what was wrong with it. PMSL. Do you have a copy of his Adamski mathematical analysis that you could post on here? I could do with a laugh. Is this what Ben pushed on UFO Truth PMSL magazine? And Steve, a mumbling, Steve mumbling says to Scott, you mean, oh right, that's the Brazil and Cavett thing, which you've just talked about before. And Steve Mumbling then repeats the points he's made many times about Brett Cavett and and Mac Brazal and, and Colonel Blanchard. Um, and then Unleash says to Mumbling, this is the gibberish equation that Charles Scott was pretending to understand. A constant force was acting on a mass of an object and there's a lot of material here, a, lot of, a long there's a long series of mathematical equations here. Okay, so is that so that so unleashed was that you essentially is that a gotcha for Scott there? You you put out this mathematical equation which is actually just which is simply just gibberish, which doesn't mean anything. It was it was a kind of thing. It was rather like what Peter Boghosian did with that. Do you remember what was that hoax called? Where he put out a postmodern article which was just generated by a computer randomly, and it was published in some major journal. What was it called? That was so funny, that was. Let's have a look here, Pete. He's a sceptic who the bloody... The, the feminists hate him because he's an anti-feminist sceptic. Oh, <laughs> yeah, um... Bloody, bloody, blah. Yes. Here we are. In 2017, Bogosian and Lindsay published a Pokes paper titled The Conceptual Penis as a Social Construct. <laughs> Honestly, even that title should surely give it away. <laughs> it was submitted to the Cogent Social Sciences Journal uh, and then and published. <laughs> the authors later revealed the hoax in Skeptic magazine. Bogos and Lindsay stated they intended to demonstrate that gender studies is crippled academically by overriding almost religious belief that... Oh, I, can't, I don't have time to talk about this in more detail. But I watched an interview with Bogos and it was really funny. Unleashed sisters mumbling. P.S. Steve, has anyone ever seen these alleged takedowns of Mick West and Thunderfoot by Scott? Because I certainly can't find them. I'm pretty sure Scott is another Branning Palmer account trying to get to Ben in a different way. All right, um, someone emailed me about this, um, claiming that this is a possibility that somehow Char that Scott is a basically part of Team Droik, pretending to be. But he's actually like a, a, a sock puppet belonging to Team Droik, designed to discredit me, essentially lure me in to some kind of gotcha, like like Bokhosian was doing. Ironically, um, I don't think that the members of Team Droik that they've recruited so far are not that good at acting. I can spot him a mile off. Scott says to Unleashed, I've already identified the gibberish comment that you incorrectly assumed I was pretending to understand, and I'm waiting for Ben to approve my comment, which is presumably in his spam box. Yeah, I, I've, I have now approved it, Scott. Sorry for the delay. You're also incorrect saying your gibberish math comment is located in reply to comments 38. I don't, I don't remember seeing it, actually, in 38. Certainly not within the last period, the month that, since the last comments reply video. You're a bloody bloody blah crackpot. Yeah. Steve Mumbling says to Unleashed, Alas, Scott and Jones aren't smart enough to know they can't debunk Mick West. Oh, Steve, read UFO Truth magazine. 
and, and it's not the only one. Other people have been after Mick West as well. I doubt Scott is a Browning Palmer account, to be honest. It would be quite smart for Browning Palmer to feed Jones a lot of crap. They'd then be published in UFO Truth magazine. It would destroy his credibility. But I seriously doubt that's what happened. I think Scott's just a rambling nutcase. Simple as that. Well, you know, I think Charles Scott actually... He, uh, he, he lay, he's a bit too heavy on the ad hominems, especially recently. But, I mean, I, mean, I, I find his posts very interesting, especially the Roswell ones. But um, I don't think he is Team Droik. And Lee says, honestly, Steve, to Steve, honestly, I've been looking for these alleged Titanic battles between Scott, Mick, Thunderfoot, and can't find them. Um, well, I don't think... Uh, well, actually, I didn't, Unleash, I could show you the comments that... I'm sure Charles could do this. You don't need um, uh, Scott. Charles Scott could do this. You don't need my help. But you should see the comments he posted on Mick West's videos. Okay, that's the end of that thread. That was an interesting one too. They're bit, good quality stuff, I think, from the skeptic contingent in this particular video. Okay. Um, Cynthia's day disclosure mumbling. I won't be looking at Citizen Trump's rubbish. You mean President Trump's rubbish, Steve? He is the U.S. president still. Don't believe Joe Biden is still on in it, do you? Jock of Ages said on Cynthia Day Disclosure, Richard Dolan lost a parent about nine months ago, if I remember rightly. And that's the reason he sort of black-pilled the last few videos. That's just my opinion, though. I know how bad grief can be, and it's different for each person, just saying. Jock, you may be right. I heard something. I, heard, I didn't look in the detail. I heard he had a bereavement, it's one of his, his mum or dad. And it could be the explanation, yes. St. Theo's Day Disclosure. John Nolan. E.T., please come and help us. Honestly, John, John I, I believe, you know, all this stuff about, we, you know, we're, we, you know, prime directive. We're masters of our own game, etc. But, you know, if any passing aliens can really help us, I, uh, I'll be perfectly content to like swallow my pride and let them step in, you know. I mean, things are that desperate. Charles Scott says on Disclosure St. Theo, Well, Ben, the mumbler has deleted my comment on his channel for the, and has given the reason for blocking me. See the deleted comment here. Um, this does not detract from the fact that George's Damsky film has been proven. Anyone who disagrees is a crackpot. Let's have a look here. Let's have a look here, Charles. Um, because, I mean, has, has he really blocked you? Is it just another case of spam folders and that? Um, what's this? Oh, this is me. Oh, this is odd. This is basically my page. Where's 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 yours, Charles? Hang on. Let me see if I can find it. Mm -hmm. That's weird. That's not the the profile actually. Um, you did post me. Hang on. You did post me. Let me just see if I can find it in history. Here we go. Here we go. Space Facebook Charles Scott. Screen subs, screenshots of Steve Mumbling's deleted comments and his reason for the deletion. Okay. All right. Oh, but small text. I, I, I have blocked Charles Scott because I'm fed up of his misleading, rambling, repetitive, offensive rubbish. Unleashed. So in other words, he was talking absolute rubbish. Oh, and then Unleashed talks about the... Actually, you know, I won't read all this out verbatim if it's if it's deleted stuff and it's private. But Unleashed talks about the thing he said earlier about apparently Charles Scott insulted some of his lost his people who lost friends. Hmm. And it goes on like this. Um, oh, I won't read any more of that because it is it's but I, but it's on Charles Scott's Facebook page if anyone wants to see it. <coughs> <coughs> Tanya Cummings says on unboxing very interesting I've heard that some of the books and authors will read the summaries in the back of Nexus and New Dawn sorry I've heard of some of the books and authors and read the summaries in the backs of Nexus and New Dawn hey Tanya you read Nexus well done girl well done go for it, go for it. Uh, it's the best magazine I've ever read in my life it's fantastic Scott says to, to Unleashed once again I'm waiting alright he's just talking about me as um, spamming my stuff. Yeah, I've I've only I've I've published everything of yours. I'm sorry for the delay, uh, Charles Scott, but I was just doing other things. 
I just I can't I can't not go you know I can't always keep checking my spam folder unfortunately that's bloody I'm afraid that's just bloody YouTube for you uh, Everard Chris Everard Tanya Cummings an interesting perspective evil abounds it does Tanya doesn't it it does we've got a an end to evil as we saw sort of, the end of the dark times Helen Moody says on unboxing hi Helen how are you nice to hear from you again I've met Helen at um, the Awakened Aware she actually exists Christchurch College, Oxford is one of the best places to sing Christmas carols. When my mother worked at Anchor Housing in Summertown, behind the Oxfam HQ, one of the lovely old chaps was still a porter there in his 80s. We attended the private service with him in 1992, and I've sung sacred music since I began my musical, go musical vocation in 1977, aged four years old. And I highly recommend that anyone go and buy the recordings. Yeah, I do. Absolutely, Helen. It's absolutely lovely. It's absolutely lovely. Helen Moody also says, invites me to talk on Skype. Yeah, because, yeah, I will do, Helen. It'd be nice to talk to you again. But I do hope to see you at the next Awaken Aware, which is supposedly, I've not heard any, anyone say otherwise, but Ker Kerry cancelled. <coughs> Kerry, you know, obviously the last year's had to be cancelled. But she said it's rescheduled to 2021, the, the, the last weekend in June. <coughs> I've not heard anyone claim... Otherwise, I've not heard anyone say that um, that it's not going to go ahead. Presumably, obviously, according to the current schedule, the lockdown will be over by then. And Kerry seems to go ahead with it. So, as far as I know, Awakening is going ahead. I don't know if it's sold out. I hope not. I'll ask her for a press pass again, if that's the case. The Watcher said on in the ENR Crane Memorial live stream... Um, I used to like Ian's video. He was a real nice chap too. I was watching him for a few good years before his death. Bless him. Oh, thanks, Watcher. Yeah, he was a lovely chap. I know. I'm glad. He's, so many, he's touched so many people, hasn't he? He was an absolutely delightful man. He was an absolutely delightful chap, yeah. Come on, post. My comment's not posting. Hang on. David Icke books the full set. There's an old one now. Uh, this is this is not the full set now. This is the old. This was the full set when I actually did this... Um, video come on guys for some reason the watcher the watcher comments not posting I wonder if this one will um well that one posted anyway the, the watcher one didn't but never mind uh it was kobe it, it may well appear on there i'll check later on but this is someone called Kobe. kobe wilbraham says i bet they're not laughing at him now well you know kobe people are laughing at him a lot less aren't they than they used to I mean, he has regained. I mean, with with the COVID nineteen stuff that he's been focusing on, and everything that's happened, you know, he has. It's almost like uh, it's vindicated some of his earlier warnings. He's not quite the Cassandra he used to be, isn't he? Uh, Doctor Respect says on Cynthia's disclosure, didn't they already already disclose some info on UFOs back in February twenty twenty one? And if that's correct, then they will release the next ones in July and probably July the 4th, Independence Day. They did indeed, uh, they, they mentioned something. Well, basically, there were some comments made by a few people. Um, Hi, Michelle, John Brennan and um, John Ratcliffe, the, not, not John Ratcliffe, the hospital, John Ratcliffe, the, the director of national intelligence. Um, however, the actual schedule is from, was actually, it re results on a, um, a, um, an act of, Congress signed by the president in in de de December, which actually runs out in June, not July. So we'll see. We'll have to see. We don't know exactly what date it will be. I speculate the first, but I'm not sure. So now Knox says on St. Theo's Day 2021. When they say life on Mars, they really mean the discovery of life on Devon Island. Oh, right. Maybe little lemmings. You've seen that Rich Planet video, haven't you, Snarnock? Yeah. Uh, ayahuasca replied to Stefan Molyneux, a new video. <coughs> I had a, I tell you what, I had a bugger of a time uploading this to BitChute. I mean, it was really, four times I had to, to upload it before it actually went. I don't know if that's going to continue. We'll, we'll see, won't we? Okay, reply. Robert Duggins, Robert Diggins, sorry, Robert Diggins says on, on that video. Good job. Personally, I can't stand listening to Stefan M because I hear him constantly arriving at the behavior of self-righteous of a self-righteous smug prick who will use puritanical or any other arguments when they suit his pursuit to feel like he's won the debate well i think that's a bit unfair robert that's going too far but he does sometimes 
act like that. Sometimes he's, you know, the, 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 the notorious interview he did with Fritz, the call, the guy who called in, was out of order. It was totally out of order. Robert continues, it has nothing to do with the good or true behaviours which he pretends to promote. They are simply the coal for his de debate engine. <laughs> that's quite poetic, that's quite clever. That is self-centred beyond any ethics. I find him, him pseudo-psychopathic and mean-spirited, serious prick. That's the word. You can hear it in his I've been to the mountaintop segment you played. Oh, that that was arrogant of him, yeah, wasn't it? That, actually, that might be a pattern with the Galtz Gulch types. All right. Galtz Gulch refers to Ayn Rand's Atlas Shrugged. And um, it's there's a, like a community built up around it, which Stefan used to be a part of. I think that's going over the top, Robert. But I mean, I know you, I've got a, I find him, I have problems with him too. But I think you go too, it's a bit too far there. Robert continues, my argument against their philosophy is simply the dichotomy between individualism and collectivism. collectivism is false. They are independent abstractions of nature, not mutually exclusive. Isle of Wight, you can have one without the other. IOW, was IOW? I don't know what that means. One of their heroes, Lysander Spooner, an apparently well-known anarchist, even suggested both in his writing on the abolition of slavery. I think it was a suggestion... 10. To create government that gives whole populations access to civil courts to ensure said government continues into future generations. That's not anarcho-voluntaryismistishness. Thanks for your video present presentation and rebuttal to that. Pfft. Okay, I've said enough. Well, you're welcome. Um, you're welcome, Joe. But I'm glad you got something out of the video anyway. Although I think you're, you're a bit too hard on Stefan. It's funny this individualism versus co individualism versus collectivism stuff. Now, by the time you watch this video, there may be a new article on her Panmo Voice, which I've just been writing, which is an, a review of Adam Curtis's Can't Get You Out of My Mind um, documentary. Chapter Part 4, in particular, goes into the individual individualism versus collectivism, because well, there's this idea that if you just have individualism, you just have, like, you have chaos, because everyone is just simply focused on themselves, and there's no there's no sense of society and humans are social creatures so you know i believe I, I i am something of a collectivist i've got to say i have communities i have families i have friends i have the truth movement as whatever you choose to call it the conspiracy sphere, the ufo paranormal conspiracy sphere. i am i believe we are a collective in the sense we have a a mo um, we have a motive a, a motive which we all share and we all drive to apart from those who do the infighting of course but it's it's a complicated thing because you know, I, when I debate with an anarchist like Trevor Murray, my co-host on Third Rail Radio, or James Cox, or one of these other people, you may have seen me on those videos, I don't have a, a, a serious... I can't contest their points. I just can't. So I, it's, it's a bit confusing here for me. But thank you for your very thought provo Very angry, but in, in some in later on, a very thought-provoking comment. Well, Robert Diggins says here again... Um, DMT is on the same video. <clears throat> DMT is produced in the human body, even in Stefan's. Yeah, Graham Hancock makes that point. It, she is secreted by the pineal gland when he sleeps, meditates in his or medicates in his hammock. Not just the pineal gland, but that less well known. But that's that's less well known. Also, he is accidentally insulting all of Western's chemical medicines at a foundational level. I know some are used for profiteering, especially SSRIs, which are not any more effective than a placebo, while being dangerous. Oh, I just remembered. What about all those cannabinoid receptors built into the human body? Stefan needs to hit the jungle medicine before he judges it so harshly. It seems like he's actually preoccupied with something he really doesn't understand. Yeah, I, I found his his assessment of it very shallow and ignorant. I mean, I, I haven't hit jungle medicine myself but i do i have looked into it for those books i showed you and the other studies i've done which and i've listened to i've been listening to you know terence mckenna i've listened to all his stuff and there's hundreds of hours of stuff of his which indicates it's far different to what he's saying far different to what stefan's claiming uh charles on the has just repeated he's just wrote down on the ayahuasca video the lyrics of a song called ebony's a good by the shaymen. That's not sh shaymen as in shame. That's the, it's a, uh, they're actually um, they're actually a synth band from the nineties, contemporaries of the KLF. Um, 
Shane Men, M E N. <laughs> I think that may be the uh, joke he's playing here. He's a good, he's a good. He's Ebenezer good. They were good, actually. That's some good tunes. Be the truth, said on Ayahuasca. He seems self righteous a lot. Like a few and like a few analogies of his, but who cares now how he's sweeping statements of why people do things. Has no idea why lots choose various than his dogma, utter drollness, so much of it. And yet some is true of his observations. Yep, only really speak determinedly from self experience. Yeah, you know, I have such a mixed feelings about Stefan Be the Truth. I really do, because um sometimes I find him enthralling and, and very educating. I mean He's changed my life, there's no doubt about it. But other times he just talks absolute drivel. On some subjects, he comes out with the most absolute nonsense. And he's so, convi he's so convinced of his own wisdom and knowledge about it. And that's when I make these reply videos to him. The, the, the subjects such as the dolphins, UFOs, the afterlife and things like that. I'm actually planning a second, another reply video on the afterlife to Stefan Molyneux because he's brought it up again. Um, so there'll be more coming from me on Stefan Molyneux, yeah. Rather like Steve Mumbling, he, he provides lots of material from me. <clears throat> Gary Robinson says, Graham Hancock, Graham Hancock, Graham Hancock, 110,000 plant species in the Amazon, and someone worked out a combo for ayahuasca and the muscle relaxants in the, the Amazon tribes used for hunting. Pretty impressive. Very. Um, when you consider that, like I said, the, the, unlike peyote, which simply you, you eventually, just, if people go around tasting all the plants, eventually they're going to discover the peyote. But you could not do that in the Amazon with ayahuasca. You couldn't, because you wouldn't find it. You only, ayahuasca, that is oral DMT that can be digested successfully by the body, is not a single plant. It is a concoction. It is a, chem, a chemical concoction which is produced through a process. And it's an, 110,000 plant species. I said millions, that was an exaggeration. But there is a huge number of plant species. The odds against that are incredible. So skeptics, is it a coincidence? I bet the skeptics are going to say that, aren't they? Gary also says here on the same video, <coughs> ayahuasca is re regularly misrepresented in movies and TV shows, which really winds me up. It is quite a lot. I mean, there's a lot of horror porn about these sorts of things. There's one good one. It's, it's the film Blueberry, which is a uh, Western. Um, it's a French production, but it's in, everything's in English. Some of the cast are French, some are English. Um, and it's about a, a cowboy, like a sheriff, who ends up delving into the world of um, the Red Indian sacred medicines and things like that. Um, well worth seeing if you can get hold of it. Cynthia's Day Disclosure, David Smith. Are we going to have some sarcasm here from our Dave? If we find any kind of life in our solar system, then we can test its DNA to see if we share any genetic similarities which could indicate whether or not we were seeded from one another. If, however, life is discovered and there's no DNA evidence linking us, then that's definitely a sign that life may be abundant in the universe. Correct, yes. I made that point in the video, David. That's right. The face on Mars was just pareidolia. No, it wasn't. Mark Carlotto, in his, you should check his statistical analysis done by Mark Carlotto. Of the face on Mars and the, and the events surrounding it, the, his his actual work was used by the Department of Defense in the U.S. to uh, buy military satellites and spy aircraft, helping them spot tanks and other things that are camouflaged. So, uh, no, Mark Colotto's work indicates that the entire Sidonia complex is artificial. Once again, the paranormal believers and conspiracy theorists hailed it as evidence until much clearer pictures were taken that showed it wasn't a face at all. Oh, you mean the, the cat litter thing? No, for, no David, the, that picture was deliberately mismanipulated to look less interesting. You know, Brian O'Leary, the NASA astronaut, he proved this. And what about Oumuamua? Someone even wrote a book on it, why they believed it to be alien. Only now we have pretty solid explanation for what it really is, a rock. No aliens needed. Ah! This is wonderful. This is a wonderful comment, David, because you're really giving me an awful lot to go on here, because... I'm in the process of reviewing that book for UFO Truth magazine. And what's more, I'm familiar with the articles and you refer to, that, that the, the actual work done on the, uh, the nitrogen ice thing. And, it, and believe me, there's more to it than you think. There is still a genuine mystery associated with a muamua. Even that Cool Worlds guy admits that. You know the Cool Worlds guy? Oh, is it, he does 
he's a good, it's a good channel actually. Cool Worlds, very well, good technically. Even he admits there are still there are still. He did an Amua Mua video. I was expecting it to be a debunker. In the end, I, I ended up congratulating him for it not being too skeptical. Do read UFO Truth magazine next issue. I do appreciate those updates though. Thanks for doing them. You're welcome. You're welcome. Would love it if you could do a my best evidence for aliens visiting the Earth type of video and just lay out what you have. Or have you considered calling one of the many talk shows that discuss and debate your beliefs? Truth Wanted, for example. You could engage in real time with a skeptard. Well, I'm actually um, I'm actually trying to, to be the kind of UFO groiper. Um, by calling into, I've, I've tried calling into, I try calling into a BBC radio when they had, it was Radio 4 they had, well, I thought what the programme was now, it was like, it was two months ago. They had on, um, not, not Professor Brian Cox, I couldn't bear to speak to him, but they had Keir Starmer on and I was going to ask him whether the Labour government would do disclosure. But I was, I was, I did it craftily, I was going to say, I'm going to ask him about his tax reforms or something, but I never got on the air. But I will do eventually, and you'll hear me as, I will be Mr UFO Groiper. And you'll hear me ask a top politician on national radio about UFOs. Richard D. Hall did that with David Cameron. Do you remember? That was brilliant. That was absolutely hilarious. Brilliant comment, David. Brilliant comment. Thank you very much. Cynthia's Disclosure, UFOs. Um, Gary Robinson says... <coughs> we go. Okay. Uh, hi, Ben. I'm at my place in Mexico right now. And one day, about a month ago, I stepped out of my front door into my courtyard, driveway area, and happened to look up into the sky. To my surprise, there were around seven or eight strange-looking objects flying in a triangular formation, which were heading in my direction. They each stayed exactly in the same place in the formation and didn't seem to nudge out of place. The strangest part of the experience was that, at first glance, they looked like flying eggs, but upon focusing them, they appeared to resemble some kind of bird. It's quite hard to explain, however... When I looked at the objects, it was as if you could see both flying egg-shaped and a bird. It's also worth noting that I could not see any wings flapping. What was odd was that they were very shiny on top, where the sun was hitting them, and they had a lot of shadow underneath, which made them very reminiscent of some classic UFO videos that Haim the Sun features in his show. My wife also saw them, however, after glancing at them for just a few seconds, she claimed they were birds. Hmm. That's a very... What you described there is fascinating. It's quite impressive it sounds like you can see these things quite clearly gary um <coughs> have you did you get any photographs of them was any doorbell footage <coughs> um did you try asking any of your neighbors because i mean you said you live in a town um if anyone else saw them at that time now seeing as you live in mexico i would honestly i would honestly get in touch with Jaime masan about that say so it's a local case can it, come and talk to me about it and you know, he, he will, he'll probably get back to you on it. He really will. I mean, he's quite approachable. I wrote to him a couple of times, and he wrote back to me. So, well, thanks, thanks for sharing that experience with us. David Smith says, probably birds. <laughs> I've been flying drones with friends, and we spotted objects that appear shiny and metallic. Once we get closer, we can see that they're birds. Well, David, um, the details which Gary give indicate otherwise. However, you know, with the flying eggs thing and birds and the shadows... But, you know, if, without, without being able to see through his eyes, it's impossible to know. And unfortunately, he, well, unless he did get some photographs of footage, which would change things, then, hmm, we, 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 you know, we, never, we, uh, we will have to wait and see. Anyway, Ayahuasca, the Crafty Nihilist, 107. Over to you, Charles Unleashed. Let's have a look. What's this? The Moulinex, Miss, Mr. Moulinex debate so quick, two tracks melt into one. That's what Oh, that's, that's me doing my cultural appropriation. Yeah, reading out of something from Lenny Henry, yeah. <laughs> Ayahuasca, nothing as it seems. Don't what else to say, uh, I think you mean don't know what else to say, other than why do you continue to listen to those contorted viewpoints, Ben? Um, it's, well, I, it's because I like listening to people who disagree with me. I like, that's why I like talking to Steve Mumbling and Charles and, and um, David and other people. I like talking to these people. I like visiting sceptic events because... I like to. I want to test my. I want to test my ideas against dissent, and it's it's very it's great fun to begin with, and it also makes me. I also I want. I don't want to be. I don't want to be misled and go down a, a false path towards delusion. I want to be able to know what the truth is and follow the truth, 
to find out what the truth is. You can't really know you're completely right until you have heard both sides of the story. This is why in court, you know, in court you have to hear the defence and prosecution case. Um, that's why, really. That's why I do it. Crafty Nihilist says, he's such a big head. I know I am. I know I am. Oh, you mean Stefan. Sorry. We're nearly at the end of the YouTube comments now. Then I'll, I'll do bit shoot on Odyssey. Right, here we go. Right. Um, oh, we have a thread here. from. Oh, Charles Scott is back in the game here on since Theo's disclosure. Okay, now, um, I might not read all about this out because I think it's... He talks about um, Adamski, which he, he, he's made these points before, about um, Adamski and Menger. Yeah, uh, Charles, Charles, I hope you don't mind. I won't read that out because we, 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 I think the, list, the viewers know what that is. But um, David Smith says underneath, did Adamski ever say anything about what he saw or what the aliens told him that could prove he was legit? Like how my... Sister came back from vacation and told me about how scuba diving equipment works and what gas mixture they used, etc. Real testable information. Was gas mixture? What gas mi mixture did Adamski breathe while he was touring the moon bases? <clears throat> Charles replies to David. Unlike the film photo expert for 50 years, original... F OK. All right, you talk about um, the, film, the footage which you claim is real and I've got no reason to think otherwise. I'm not trying to prove... What they said is correct. I formulated a probability of what I think is correct. It's up to you to do your homework on what Adamski and Menger said and formulate your own probability. David Smith said in reply to that, well, as far as I know, nothing was said that could be tested and thus the story and claims cannot be validated. Okay. Disclosure 2021. Charles Scott says here, look at the Wikipedia page of George Adamski I found verifiable evidence that, oh, this is new stuff, I think, Riedel was a film photo expert, and therefore following Riedel's opinion is invalid, irrelevant, um, worthless dross. Adamski's infamous chicken brooder photograph, which he claimed to be UFO taken on December the 13th, 1952, however, German scientist Walter Johannes Riedel said the photo was faked using a surgical lamp and the landing struts were general electric light bulbs. Oh, right, I've, I've seen this, yeah. I've heard about this. It's yeah, it's 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 that's the claim made. But then they've also said that about the photographs taken in Romania of the church, and there's no they're very, they're similar. I think they're a bit older than Adamski's photo. I think they date back to the twenties or thirties. But there's no they look a bit just because they look a little bit like a street lamp. People think they are a lamp, and they're not. <clears throat> but um, I, anyway, um, there's no replies to that. Ayahuasca Rex Rampage says, um, Great video, Ben. I've never been a big fan of, of Stefan Molyneux. He comes across as an obnoxious sociopath and very ignorant. With all his eloquent dic diction and philosophy promoting creative thinking, he's very narrow-minded. What a wasted intellect. I respect you, Ben, for questioning him and being the voice of reason. Thank you, Rex. Thank you very much. Um, again, like with the other guy, um, Dickens or whatever his name is, um, I think it's it's too strong. Obnoxious sociopath. He's not a sociopath. He he is ignorant of certain things, and he seems to have an overconfidence in his own abilities when he's dealing with subjects he doesn't know much about. So he believes he can analyze and work them out, and that's not necessarily the case. And so that's when I make these videos. And I know he watches me because I've I've heard him using my some of my um, catchphrases. So I just hope I'm, I don't want to be nasty to him. I just want to hope that he maybe reassesses his positions on certain things if he oh, oh my goodness me 22 minutes left and then we'll be six hours <coughs> but we're on the last we're now on the last youtube question and it's to St. theo's day disclosure snarnock said i read tony Dock's dodd's excellent book after i watched richard d hall's interview with him and it contains a hilarious scene a hilarious scene in an abduction in which one gray from a group of them intensely enjoys rubbing its face in a woman's jacket. I also remember reading about an alien in a UFO contact in Brazil which was which accepted a cigarette. All oh, right. They they act, they act odd sometimes, don't they? I mean, this is why you can't always you know, you can't necessarily understand definitely what their behavior is going to be. You don't always know. 
Okay, so I'll go to Odyssey and see what's on Odyssey. I'll, I'll do bit shoot first. It's always easy because, as always with bit shoot, there's a big problem, which is um, <coughs> the big problem with bit shoot is oh, I'll, I'll, I've got sticks open there. I'll just let him stay. I'll let him stay on pause for the time being. Is that the uh, this only happened actually since they changed the commenting system? You don't get notifications. So I mean, I don't actually know how many comments of you know, comments I've had on bitch, my bit shoot uploads. And I never will unless I go through every single damn video. And I've got over a thousand of them uploaded. So all I can do is actually go, all I'll do, I'll do the, the best I can, which is to go through the comments that I've received since the last comments reply video. And so comments reply 39. No comments. Tolkien film review. John Doe says, great stuff, Ben. Oh, okay. Um, I'll just put a thumbs up there. Great. John Doe. John Doe at 70. Thanks, John Doe. I'll just put here. Um, thank you very much. I don't know if he'll read this, but hopefully he'll just see the comments reply video and realise I, I, I answer the bit shoot comments towards the end of the, the actual video. Oxford Graffiti. Um, John Doe. Um, good stuff, Ben. And I write thanks, John, underneath. I've given him a text comment. So, John Dose at 70, thank you very much. Um, what happened to Sarah Everard? <coughs> the pit shooters will love this one. Oh, I've got a few comments. Good. Um, Ghost of Sparta says, um, Spot on, mate. Good report. The whole thing seems off. Why, in this particular case... Over all the mainstream media, the radical feminists and liberals are swarming all over it. It's a George Floyd type scenario. Uh, it's funny, you know, like um, it is has, it does have similarities to that. In other words, um, because I mean, the George Floyd, the reason George Floyd ended up such a cause celeb is basically because he happened to be in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the right time to die under the right circumstances. And the same happens to Sarah Everard. If it had, you know, the, the ingredients were all there. White, middle-aged copper, elite copper, kills sweet, innocent young woman. Therefore, you know, feminist outrage. It's just, they, they're very selective on what they get outraged about. That's what's so nasty about them. Um, as I said earlier on to, um, to BZ Garson, you know, will Jess Phillips read out the names of the men killed by mother men in murders, which outnumber the women by 250%. Will she do that on International Men's Day? If she did that, I'd have some kind of respect for her. But I, I'm fed up with this one-sided um, double standards, these one-sided double standards you get from these um, people, the, the liberals and the feminists, as you call them. Batia777 says, did I hear you right? She was 33, it happened on 3321. And Lean Luke says, yes, disappeared around 9.30, 9.33. Yeah, I mean, this is, I brought this subject up on the YouTube thing, and it's, it's, an, interesting, it's an interesting angle, isn't it? I don't know specifically. But, mm. The Watcher 71 said on, the, on that video, no, you have, to, you have a duty to keep your big fat fucking gob shut until you have a proof to back up your claims, and then you have a duty to expose it to the public. And then, until then, would you kindly fuck off, Tosser? Request fucking denied, Watcher. No, I won't. No, I won't. If, I, if people do that, then this, these murders go on. These procurements go on. The elite keep doing these horrible things to horrible people. If you think otherwise, then sue Cathy O'Brien. Sue Mark Phillips. But you won't do that, will you? You won't give them their day in court. Because so get your head out of your ass and get, get back to reality. Turn off the news and read, loser. All right, where are we now? Ian R. Crane Memorial. <clears throat> uh, John Doe, great stuff, Ben. I enjoyed the tribute you did on Thursday's Sapanwo radio show. Thank you very much, John. Much appreciated. Unboxing Honest. All right, I've had three upvotes on that anyway, which is nice. Uh, Batia says... My goodness, been following you, and now I know another reason I like you and was drawn to you. I traced my mum's line back to Denbyshire back in 1200 AD and went down the Welsh rabbit hole. See Middleton of Denbyshire and Shirk. 
I dream of visiting one day. It also makes me a distant cousin of Diana. Small one day. Hey, but say, yeah, well, um, do go. I mean, obviously, when the lockdown's over, take a sentimental journey and check out your old background. I mean, it's quite, that's quite something. To, ch to trace your entire family back to 1,200. My goodness me, that's what, 900 years. That's incredible. You must have, you know, it takes a lot of research to do that. I mean, I, I know that I've traced a bit of my family tree, but not to that extent. UFO Disclosure 2021. <coughs> um, good stuff, Ben, says John Doe. Thanks, mate. Thank you, John. Much appreciated. And finally, uh, I had to give it, I tried giving it a different, I actually called it New Year from Free Domain. This is the ayahuasca reply to Stefan Molyneux. I changed everything about it, the description, title, um, and things like that, hoping it would make some difference to... Um, to the fact they took me four attempts to upload this, and I don't know why. I did some test uploads just to see if it was, if there was um, anything I could do about it, and, I, and it's odd that I couldn't. You know, and you got one thumbs up anyway. But Ichabob says, same shit faces under new channels. Fuck off! Israel did nine eleven. That's the only news for nineteen years. Anything else you type is bullshit. No, it's not Ichabob. Israel did not do nine eleven. All right, that's. The blaming it's it's it was I don't understand this thing about the whole world centers on Israel. I did an entire video on that. I think it's a red herring. Israel's not to blame for these things. Israel is just a place. It doesn't have there's no conspiracy for Israel to rule the world. They have an intelligence agency, Mossad, but nine eleven is something very different. Nine eleven was literally a direct deep state operation. It had nothing to do with Israel. So I think you're wrong there. Okay, guys, that's BitChute over with, and this video won't even bloody play now. Uh, BitChute's still full of bugs, unfortunately. But let's go to Odyssey. Now, I, had to, I, did have, I know I had at least one interesting comment on Odyssey. Oh, my daily watch reward is ready. Oh, lovely. You, it has its own, like, cryptocurrency. Um, um, it does. Um, Odyssey. Okay, I've got one comment here. I've only had one comment, actually, in the last... Um, in, since the last... Let's have a look. Since the last, oh, I noticed that um, they only go back 10 days. Okay, no worries. But I, I think I know I had it. I, don't, I, re, I always make a note of them, and I don't remember any comments before then, but I've had... Um, Odyssey Odyssey's under attack, actually, through library, because the, the bloody Security and Exchange Commission in the United States are trying to attack it. Obviously because they just want to shut it down. They just don't like it because it's free speech. But they, they're using some kind of loophole, some kind of technicality and in the regulations to shut it down. It's stupid, it really is. <clears throat> and here we have this video here, which is called the Morgellons Test. What am I doing? I've got, oh, I think I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it within six minutes. Oh, I earned 0.3 whatever for, right. Stay Free says, yes, mate. No more chemtrails, I've noticed that too. Now, how many reports of people finding Morgellons on masks? And I said, I saw that too, scary. It's the test as well as the vaccine that we need to avoid, and that's that, oh, that's the like the weird pseudo life, the the Sophia Smallstorm stuff that she talks about, the the weird Morgellons fibers on the bloody PHP tests. That's cr that's scary, isn't it? Truth Seeker nineteen says it's not condensation trails, uh, condensation trails. At my age, you know how they look. What we have now is chemtrails, pure poison. Yeah, and I put a text reply onto there. Unable to create comment. Oh, right, it's probably because it's a, a, a duplicate comment. I'll just do that there. There we go. Okay. So that's Odyssey over and done with. Now, let's go back to YouTube. I'll just refresh the channel comments page first. But then I'll go to the notifications page on YouTube because that's usually where the new comments are. Oh, I have here. Yes, yeah, so I have another one here from Charlie. Charlie Chili 943 who says on Ayahuasca, that's three hours ago. Have you ever partaken in remote viewing or done a video on the subject? Another topic I'd like to see a video on is would, would be targeted individuals. Keep up the great work. Thanks, Charlie. You know, I have done a remote viewing session with Tony Topping twice. Once I, I did do a video on it, actually. It was actually, um, it was actually the RawCon video, the last conference I went to last, last February. It's the one in Hull, um, where I did a remote viewing workshop with Tony Topping. I did another one, actually, in, in High Wycombe the previous year, which I didn't... It's, it's the same one, but I had limited success in both occasions. 
Well, thank you for that. Yeah, I will target individuals. Well, you know, I I was doing a video with with bloody Kieran Lee Perrin, and then I did an interview with Kieran Lee Perrin on <clears throat> on her Panama Radio. But then he just I don't know what happened to him. He suddenly seems to just drop everything, and and he block he actually unfriended me on Facebook, and I just got angry with him and blocked him because well, why? I mean, well. He suddenly started making videos just slagging off Miles Johnston. It was just like he, he got together with a couple of other of Miles' enemies and he just started making videos attacking Miles Johnston on a personal level. And I thought, Kieran, why are you doing this? Let me just find the vid. I'll just find the thing I wrote about him. Hang on. I actually had a go at him on Facebook. Here we are. Um, hmm. Because I was so impressed with him. I was just so impressed with him. And then he just. Oh, I can't find it, actually. All oh, right, um, I can't find it actually. Now I, I actually didn't mention it, name him at the time. But there's no, there's no harm in saying it because I mean he made these videos and he put them on his channel. But I just said, you know, what's wrong with you? You are a TI. You have implants galore in your body, and you just, you just put that aside to, in, to, to indulge yourself in a petty little personal squabble, and that's all it is. That's all it was, Kieran. It was a squabble you had with Miles Johnston, and. F for fuck's sake, what's wrong with you? Of all the people I thought would be above that, someone who understood the seriousness, the seriousness of what's involved here, I thought you would be the one. And you unfriend me because I won't, I won't dissent, I won't dissent, I won't join you in your little, I won't dissent to that level, I won't join you in your little playpen. For goodness sake, Kieran, I'm, I mean, maybe, he's, maybe you've changed your position since then. If so, get in touch. But if not, I don't want to hear from you again. I really don't. So I was going to make a video on targeted individuals. I made one on his channel, which he then, I think he deleted it. Because, like I said, he just, all he cared about was this infighting. It's pathetic. Oh, here we go. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the YouTube notification now to see what's been said. Call your local... Since, here we go. I've got two on there. Slacks that upload your creeping anxiety. Okay, Maya 2C. Right, okay. Ed Kaler. Okay, then, great job. Thanks, um... Ed, great stuff. I'll just give you a little love heart then. Thanks very much. I don't need to put another notification. Um, um, here we go. Oh, um, Enter the Dragon has replied. <coughs> Enter, the Gra Enter the Dragon has said something. Oh, that was three, hang on, two hours ago, Enter the Dragon said, um, thanks, even Colonel Holt admitted there were spooks on the base. I wonder if some memories were false, if they were affected by the craft and beings to remember different things. There are questions that I have, like I haven't seen the answer to, like the SAS being on the base. Was that ever confirmed or debunked? This would make a fantastic Hollywood movie. Surprised it's never been taken up by big budget studios. Well, the SAS were not on the base. That was a silly, that was a silly frivolity that was amplified by the media. You wouldn't have these ridiculous things where the special forces going around, like in mock battles, where they're all where they actually have armed. They're actually armed and they're ready for action. I mean, you know, on exercises they might do that, but never on active duty. Um, as for the movie, well, Gary Heseltine actually wrote a script. He, he got together with someone, wrote a script, but they couldn't find anyone to to take to actually pick it up. It's, it would make a great movie, but there is a great documentary coming out about it. Another new one, which is going to be the best, it's called Cable Green. And so I do recommend watching that. Legend Reel, so I don't need to put a notice on here, but Legend Reel says in reply to my comments notification. These are all comments that have that come about while I've been recording this. Thank you, Ben. A great tribute to a genius who will be much missed by all. And, you know. T. Garner replied three hours ago. When I lived in Holland, when I lived in Holland, there used to be a TV star. Oh, right, is he just repeating what he said earlier? which I've replied to about that. It's very interesting. Chili says, all oh, right, just Chili's thing about remote viewing. Charles says, you know what though, Crafty, when Palmer Branning tried to make the hit piece on him a year ago, it was actually Ben's hardest, harshest critics that came out to defend him. That's true, and you know, I really, uh, I appreciate that, um, Charles, I really do. Um, that hit piece was just absurd. That was Team Droik, basically under one of their aliases, just make going on about just picking at me is horrible. <clears throat> John Nolan says on um, on this. What's this? Hang on. Oh, this is about um, oh, 
hi Ben, get Michael on your show so you can tell us what the Germans are up to. Oh, um, Shrimpton, yes. <laughs> yep, the Germans did it. I'll, I'll have a word with Mr. Shrimpton about that, yeah. Michelle Sovereign says on you, I've got a lot of really new uh, stuff on here, hang on. Um, yeah, Michelle Sovereign, where's Michelle Sovereign? Michelle Sovereign's commented, all right, seems disclosure is happening. On UFO disclosure, where? Where is it? Where's the comment? Where's the comment? Hang on, I'll have to go, I'll have to, go to the video, hang on. I'm just going to go to the spam folder, it might be there, but Michelle Sovereign is like trying to inform me that trying to inform me that disclosure is happening and I can't find the comments. Wonderful, right, let's just have a look. Got, um, comments. Health review? None. It's just on the notification. Okay, well I'll just read it from the notification here. Uh, Michelle Sovereign says... Oh, it's a YouTube link, and I can't, can I, I can't even cut and paste it out, and I cut and paste it. Seems disclosure is happening. All right. For some reason, Michelle Sovereign's comment is not appearing on, is not appearing on my video. Let's have a look. This will be exclusive. All right, this is, oh, this is the Pentagon to release UFO report on difficult to explain sightings. All right, thank Michelle, thank you, I've seen this. It, it, it's kind of disclosure happening. It's not like disclosure with a capital D, but it is encouraging. It's encouraging, and I feel it's something that makes me feel uh, encouraged. It makes me feel happy that this is happening. I think it's all part of that momentum that's building. And I'm sorry, I, for some reason, I can't see your, your comments not appearing. It's appearing on my notifications. It's not appearing, either not in the spam folder, not in anywhere else. Kevin Moore Show, Reason TV, um, Sticks Hexenhammer, Mr. Opaque Lens. And Quest TV, and I think that's it in terms of comments. Yeah, then we come on to Snarnock's comment. Okay, ladies and gents, I'll just do one more refresh and see how what happens. Call your nope, uh, nothing new, no new, nothing new since then. Right, so in that case, I'll just call it a day. It's, it's, I'm literally four minutes from six hours. That's a long comments reply video, but thank you very much, everyone uh, who's watched through all these almost six hours. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much for everyone who's posted a comment. Friends and enemies alike, they've been very, very good indeed. And uh, do keep watching the video. There's going to be a lot coming up. There's a lot of um, ideas I have. Another reply video to Stefan Molyneux. Maybe another more personal video if I think it's the right time to do it. And, um, yeah, lots of other things indeed. Um, and I'll be keeping a careful eye on this video that was... Basically, YouTube deleted it, and then I appealed it, and they reinstated it. Basically, it's just the bots. I mean, it's, you can tell that it's not no real people look at these things. But the last time that happened, they then banned the video again and didn't accept my appeal. If that happens, I'm going to make a video about it, because I think these things need to be documented when they happen. But obviously, it, in a way, it doesn't really matter much, because um, anything that's deleted from YouTube is backed up on BitChute, on Library TV, Odyssey, and I'm probably going to put it on somewhere else at some point. So wherever it, wherever I go, you know, all my eggs are not in the YouTube basket anymore, so don't worry about that. Thank you all of you for watching Hapanwo TV. Really much appreciated. I've really enjoyed it. Hospital Port as pride and dignity stop the new world order.